Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Hospitality Digital Marketing Live Show number 185. That's right, 185. We come to you each week now for, well, we're into, oh, coming up to our fifth year pretty soon. With me is uh, Stuart Brother, oh, wonderful, to field travel, and with us a special co host from Fly Travel. Whoops, sorry, let me turn my other computer off. With us is Tal. Tal, I, I apologize, I'm not going to try even try your last name. How do you say your last name? It's actually quite easy. It's from okay. Chenko. It's as if I came from Chenko. From Chenko. Oh, you know what? I probably could have tried it, I guess, uh, with Fly there. And, and, and as our special uh, co-host, we get to go over and uh, to ask a lot of questions about drones today, which is why we got Stuart so early, because as a fellow geek monster, uh, it is a <laughs> joy to think that we get to talk about some fun technology. Tal, as our yeah. special co-host uh, with this, uh, we would love for you to go over and take the lead as to what it is that you do, what's going on. Uh, why did you do it and uh, all the other kind of fun stuff? So, Tal, take it away. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you, Lauren. It's great, uh, great being here. So, Thank I'll give you like the short uh, thing about Flyder. So, Flyder is basically the most innovative way to promote tourism. It is an immersive way to experience remote locations through the eyes of a drone. We connect you with a drone operator that is on the premises and let you remotely control his drone in real time. Okay, now this way, you can experience the resort firsthand, um, and for five whole minutes, you're actually flying over the beautiful location and taking it all in. Now, if you think about the way that resorts are currently promoting themselves nowadays, you see just more of the same. It's the same photos, the same videos over and over again. Now, using Flyther's disruptive technology basically lets you cut through the clutter and stand out in comparison to all others. Now, we've noticed that the most common reaction of the users is, wow, I want to be there once they fly with us. They develop a sort of familiarity with the location, and they're more prone to choose it as their next vacation destination, effectively increasing the sales and revenues of the resort. It's also great as a, a loyalty program incentive where you can offer visitors to your website to sign up for the program and fly over the resort. It's great for seeing the golf courses and beautiful scenery that you have in the area. And uh, it's also an amazing PR that you can do and attract a lot of attention and make a huge buzz out of it. Very That's cool. like what we do in a nutshell. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, I know that we talked. We did. We, we we met each other at the digital conference. So did with Stuart, and we 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 had a blast looking at the drone. And it is pretty. It, it's amazing the fact that you can the the, the the fly the drone, and, and there's really not much latency to it at all. And, and, and when you're flying, because it is as if you for for those of us who fly drones, it's like oh my gosh, it's just like flying your own drone. Um, bunch of questions, but I'm not going to jump in first. Stuart. <laughs> you want, do you want to introduce Robert first? He jumped on. Oh, I'm sorry. Robert, Robert Cole, Rock Cheetah. Robert, Hi, Robert. Tell, tell Robert Cole with Rock Cheetah. We, we, met, we met at the, at the digital that's conference. That's right. You, I keep reintroducing everybody. I apologize. I keep forgetting that we actually met each other. I think the only person he didn't meet from the crew is uh, Ed, because Ed wasn't there. So if That's right. Ed was in the Bahamas at the time. Yeah. Right. So, so I think a, probably the first question, Tal, that you get asked a lot is like the, the liability side. So we had this conversation at HSMAI, but do you want to talk a little bit about the proprietary technology you guys have created that, that prevents someone as crazy as Lauren from crashing the drone into, <laughs> into a building or yeah. into a person? Yeah, definitely. So we developed within our software some um, automatic preventative systems that will prevent you from doing certain things like limit you to a certain altitude, both uh, on the low end and on the high end. So the operator can make sure that you're not uh, going over any rules that you're not allowed to or jeopardizing anything that uh, is in the area. Like if there are trees, so he can limit the drone to a higher altitude. Um, so we have that. We can also geofence the drone in a certain perimeter and let him fly only in that area. We can also make sure that he looks at a certain area that the resort wants the the person flying the drone to see and not see let's say the you know the garbage cans in that area so we <laughs> yeah. can make sure that uh the drone is basically you you're free to fly it within a certain perimeter that we let you gotcha gotcha it, it, because i think the other question that i had had for you hsmei was the the 
the legal issues related to restrictions of who can fly fly drones, but you kind of get around that because you had actually have a physical pilot there that's a licensed pilot on the ground, right? Right. So each country has its own regulation. Now, if you take the U.S., for example, you need to have a licensed pilot and a visual observer. And then what you do is uh, according to the FAA regulation. I mean, because you have someone that is on the ground, he is the remote pilot in command, and he lets someone uh, to remotely manipulate the airplane, the, the aircraft. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So do we want to see this thing in action? Can we do that? Uh, yeah, sure, we can try. Um, yesterday we did a small test with Lauren, but the thing that yep. uh, we need to take into consideration that this software here is kind of jittery and it won't really give you the experience that you get right. when you use FlyDare. Right, because uh, you feed to a feed to a feed through the system. So, yeah, right. the jittering isn't on your end. It's, <clears throat> it's just the nature of the software we're using. To rebroadcast. <laughs> the nature of our of our little video yeah. webcast. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, the neat part of this, the implications of this, of the ability to go over and remotely in real time look at what you're considering for your vacation is profound because people have that skepticism of, okay, you're showing me your best pictures. You're showing me what you want me to see. And then even on the consumer sentiment side, you're seeing um, biased pictures, you know, whether it's somebody that loves the place or hates the place, you're seeing their interpretation or their images of what they want to show. This gives you your firsthand opportunity to go over and say, right. hey, you know what? I'd like to see it. Now, yes, we're not going to fly over garbage, Kansas style says. We're not going to fly, fly over areas we don't like. We're certainly not going to go over and disturb the guests that are there by us voyeuristically looking at what's going on. But by the same token, <laughs> you get to go over and validate that you're interested in looking. You're, you're seeing stuff that you get to see in real time and you get to appreciate what it is that you're considering in a way that honestly nobody else has done yet. I mean, this is not this is not like a webcam looking at a beach. You know, right. this is selectively choosing what it is you may want to see in a way that you want to see it, which is pretty cool. Right. I mean, I think that's yeah. pretty neat. Okay. You know, um, that exact that reminds me of the time when uh, my wife and I we planned our honeymoon in the Maldives, and I remember how we browsed through so many resorts trying to find the perfect place for us. And how frustrating it was that all the videos and photos that we've seen were more or less the same, and you couldn't really get uh, a, a good decision. And if we had fly there, they would uh, enable us to fly and see the actual resort firsthand. We could have made a decision like that, you know, see, oh, this is really an amazing place, and you would book it right away. So uh, yeah, I totally yeah. agree with you. Yeah, I'd I'd mentioned to uh, tell at the uh, at the conference that. Um, Oh, back after Hurricane Wilma hit um, Cancun, right? A big Category 5 hurricane, massive destruction. Um, a lot of hoteliers, um, particularly the North American ones, uh, were deciding to stay closed for as long as possible and take you know, basically business interruption insurance payments as opposed to opening up and, and running low occupancies. So, um, but most of the Mexican resorts wanted to get their staffs back working, and, and the place was fine, right? They, you know, the place had recovered. They had fixed the hotels, and we spent a fortune because yeah. I was working with a big tour operator, basically flying people in to you know, Eshkeret, we had people on the beach with live video feeds, and yeah, you know, we went out and did a whole bunch of video production, and yeah, you know, that was what ten years ago, and now you can kind of go, hey, here's some drones, and let me tell you that we accelerated the return of that destination probably six to nine months, I would I would say by doing mm -hmm. that. that was program. Now again, that was it wasn't really business to consumer. We went and did it for. Um, it was more a B2B thing, but all that footage, all those agents could go show them and go, no, here's what the beach looks like. It's not mm. devastating. It was, this was filmed a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. Mm. And, well, uh, and, yeah. and in that, in that same light, um, you know, something we unfortunately end up talking to hotels a lot about, uh, and DMOs too, is how do you, how do you keep sensitivity when your area didn't get destroyed by the natural disaster, your neighbor did? Uh, and the Palm Beaches here in Florida, actually, um, when the the big hurricane came through Florida, what was that, a year ago, two years ago? Um, they actually did a flyover as a, you know, here's everything without, so without saying, hey, you know, we didn't get affected, it, it was more just like, 
here's what the Palm Beaches looks like right now. Yeah, and, and this uh, one is look, so take gave a look you the ability. Yourself. Yeah, and well, and it gives you the ability to to just show without potentially being, you know, uh, insensitive to the, the people who've been affected. Flyovers are, are great for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a, a flyover where you're actually doing the flight. Now, if I could just see how I can share my screen here. Up in the top will... middle, up in the top middle, that little window screen, oh, don't hit the red okay. button, but yeah, the, the little TV screen. Yeah, stay away from the red button. Okay, so stay away from the red button. Let's push the red button. No, 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 no. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, not yet, not yet. It'll come over in just a moment, I think. There we go. So while you were talking, I uh, connected to our operator, which is now in Mexico. Do you guys let me know when you see the screen? We do. Oh, we do. You do. Okay. So now I'm flying the drone. Okay. Uh, taking a look here in the Mexican uh, beach. You can see the area. Uh, do you see it? Yeah. 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 Is okay, that Cancun? So that's Cancun. I can recognize right. That's right. So here. Uh, I'll start moving with the drone to take a look, let's say, to see the the boats here. That are, uh, you see? So, and, and, uh, and, and for anybody else watching, please understand that the jitteriness or the the, the 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 shifting is not because of theirs. Theirs actually, if you were to look it on, the, if you do it yourself, and we'll give you the link to it, um, is very smooth as if you were really flying the drone. It's because we're transmitting through this transmission that you're getting this jitteriness. Yeah, so he's theory, saying it's it's Lauren's technology. It's Lauren's technology. technology. <laughs> this is this is how Lauren normally flies his drones. He That's right. A, a video update every you know, two or three seconds. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah I, I, so, that's for sure. As you can see, you know, uh, this is exactly actually the exact same experience as if I were now standing on the beach in Cancun flying the drone. I don't know how it goes through the video, but that's the experience that I'm having. I'm mm -hmm. flying at like uh, 36 kilometers per hour, which is um, something in miles per hour. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, I can actually, I can actually move somewhere, to, uh, somewhere here. between five yeah, and go. eighty. Here's, we don't know. Here's yeah. the miles per hour. Here now I'm going yeah. 23 miles per hour. Yeah. And, and for those who may not know, Tal is actually in Europe at this moment. He's doing this remote from Europe to us, which right. Yes. So you see, we can see here how beautiful the water are. It's like. As soon as you see this, you're like, yeah, I'd kind of like to be there right now. That looks awesome. You know, it does have that effect that we, because again, going back to our modalities of life right now, we're used to watching the news where there's a camera for everything. We're used to the fact that, you know, body cameras for policemen and, and, and street cameras for events and so forth. We're used to the news being delivered visually to us for everything. And, and if there's no pictures, we're wondering what the heck happened? Why is there no pictures about this? Because we're so used to pictures and everything. This is a step up to that. That's, this is that ability to control what it is that you're interested in looking at rather than being fed what it is that people want to show you. Totally, completely. Yeah, like so if you, take a, if you think about the evolution of entertainment, you see that entertainment has evolved from traditional linear broadcast television to on-demand videos, and now uh, the ability to tune in and interact with live video broadcasters. And with Fly There, you actually get the controls to a truly, to a truly immersive experience uh, that has not been done so far. It right. lets you really uh, teleport your mind somewhere else in the world. Who is your primary client? Who is it that you know you would say, so look, you really just, should uh, listen? Say uh, to the operator that he can take back the drone. Um, you can take back the drone now, OK? There you you see now the operator took control. And he, at any given time, he can jump in and intervene and take uh, the control away from me, if he feels like that. Wait. There okay, I'm back here. That's great. Okay. Cool. So, Tal, who is it that yeah. you want, from a client's perspective, for people that you think would be interested in putting this into their resort? Obviously, there's there's particular people that you think would be most prone to this. Who is it that you think would be your optimum client? So, I think that first of all, luxury resorts. Uh, any resort that charges uh, a nice amount and that requires some um, decision from his uh, users, uh, it's going to be perfect for them that have a beautiful scenery or beautiful golf courses that they want to show their, uh, their potential clients. Um, countries and governments that uh, cities that want to promote tourism to their area, we're already in, in discussions with several. Um, so these are the main criteria that I see that it can promote. Also uh, booking engines. So let's say if you're uh, booking.com and you are um, 
having people that are searching for hotels or resorts in Phuket, Thailand, and we have an operator over there so they can um, put in a button that will have people fly in Phuket and actually see how beautiful it is. That's neat. That's neat because yeah, you're right. There's not, I mean, yes, you can look at pictures and, and whatever else people supply online for it, but again, it's, 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 it's curated content compared to being able to see this firsthand by being able to control the drone. I hadn't really thought about the booking engines of the governments and the cities and DMAs and stuff. Oh, yeah. I, how, do you, you know, how do you handle uh, multiple people wanting to do this at the same time? So either you, it depends on uh, the demand and uh, supply, you know, on each location. So either you queue them up in, uh, in a queue and have them, uh, you know, book a certain location, a certain time to fly. Or you can also, we are now working on the ability to let people live broadcast their flight on uh, Facebook, but in high quality, not the jittering stuff that you've seen now. So like in uh, a month or two, we'll be able to have them live broadcast it as well. Neat. So the properties that you have, have it deployed at now, I know you've got a few, one in Brazil, Mexico, there's a couple of other places. What, what kind of demand are you seeing and what kind of feedback are you getting from the guests that are, that are trying it? So, um, so far we've done a couple of thousands of flights uh, in these areas. And like I said, the most common res uh, thing that we hear from our users, they all have a feedback survey, feedback surveys afterwards, is wow, I want to be there. Uh, so that's the most mm -hmm. uh, common thing. Besides that, it's like, we can't believe, I can't believe that, uh, you know, I'm flying over Brazil. I've always wanted to visit uh, the big Buddha temple in Thailand all these kind of things, you're seeing really excited reactions from users. And you see that mm -hmm. users are actually trying to book trips to that area that they've flown in, even if they've never thought about it before that, because they didn't know that Thailand is so beautiful, that Bali is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can see this also from a curated point of view that, that for uh, places like you said, the Golden Buddha and so forth, that um, it is it, it, not everybody gets their chance to see this, but also if they're in control of what they can regulate for drone flights and so forth, that self-promotion capability where instead of personal drones or outside entities trying to take just static images, if the, the, the government that controls that destination for cultural events like that can have drones that people can go see. I mean, I can even see you guys broadcasting eventually where, you know, it's not just one person flying it, but you may in fact, because you have everything configured and set up that during events or during certain festivals or certain things, you could actually curate content live for the government because you're already there and well established and in control and everything else. You get to be literally a broadcaster for a lot right. of their the, stuff. The thing with the, the thing that uh, is important to understand that we are offering responsible drone flights. It's not just having anyone fly his drone. It's with a professional operator on the ground that is monitoring the flight and making sure that no regulations are being violated and that everything is according to the hotel. So let's say we make sure that if we're flying in resorts, we're using quiet propellers and limiting the height of the drone to a certain altitude that won't invade the privacy of the guest and won't disturb them because it's really high up and no one will notice it. Mm. So uh, that's one thing. Another thing that is also really cool is that you, the resort can offer, many resorts have no drone policy and they will be able to offer their guests that are actually staying in the hotel to use the, the drone service to fly there from the hotel and by that get amazing footage without disturbing the other guests. They won't have like a million drones flying around, but just one right. drone of the resort. Very true. I remember when ski cams first came up and everybody was standing in line to be able to control a pan and tilt camera on some ski slope to go see what the conditions were, what people were doing at the time and so forth. And I can see what you're doing in the same way that once people realize the availability of this, uh, not just even the monetization capability, but just the ability to go see and do and, and fly these things in an autonomous way. That's, that's, I can see that being where people would line up and go, okay, I have a scheduled time that I'm going to fly the drone and so forth and so on. I, I can see you have a little fleet of drones recharging in certain locations because the demand will be persistent on some of those ones. We already do see that in the locations that we're alive. Uh, in addition to the, what I just told you, we also have a, uh, a consumer brand uh, that is called flyther.com that we have people that are flying in these places. When we see people that are lining up and they're just, um, you know, the, the responses are out of this roof uh, about the excitement, about doing something that is so mind blowing. I mean, it's literally teleporting your mind to somewhere else in the world. 
Like if you've seen Game of Thrones, it's like being the the warlock so that are uh, looking up to the raven. You know, it's exactly the same. Thing. So, so what's your what's your vision for the future? Um, are you are you looking for this to to be the bigger consumer play and and have that be like where your commercial model really thrives, or are you uh, you know have some other com- completely different thing in mind so there are two different uh aspects one is the consumer brand uh which is uh letting people just see places uh, around the world um and having drone people uh, offering their service uh, regardless and will just be a marketplace to connect between them and there's the the b2b play that is promoting resorts and promoting governments and tourism to places and becoming a golden standard I mean, today, when you want to travel somewhere, so you're usually looking up in Google Maps or something like that. And instead of that, we want that in one click, you'll be able to take off with a drone and actually see the place and get an immersive experience. You can now, wouldn't, way, wouldn't eventually, wouldn't you be able to uh, do this without the drone having to be there? I mean, wouldn't you eventually be able to have enough recorded understanding of the area that it could be a software uh, approach to it so this is exactly you know hitting the hammer uh, the nail with a hammer because the difference between a passive experience when you're uh, seeing a recorded video and having an active experience where you're actually doing it live now and controlling the drone and controlling your experience is something completely different it's uh, and it's something that you need to try in order to understand the difference between that because one is a passive experience, and usually when you're seeing a video or a simulated uh, reality, so you just click forward with that. Uh, you jump usually every few minutes. And when you're doing this active experience, you're really immersed into that and really thinking where you want to go, what do you want to see, etc. Yeah, Ed, I could see some uses for that. I mean, you may be able to do that also if you're a ski resort, right, and someone's looking in August or September and they they aren't going to be able to fly over the slopes and see, see that sort of thing. You could probably, do, um, you know, do some things like that. Or if the weather's bad, right? You could have things where maybe the drone can't fly, where you can say, yeah, it's not available, and you can do it. But yeah, I right. think uh, I think you have some different alternatives to, you know, not just being a pure one hundred percent live, you know, live opportunity. You can yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, even the queuing. Let's say there's high demand. Um, yeah. You know the the person who's there on the B two B plays reason. So I'm here because uh, Stewart's group in Myrtle Beach uh, said that I should check out flying and looking at Myrtle Beach, and I see that they're backed up to where I can't look at it till tomorrow. Having an option of hey, we recorded everything yesterday, and you can still point at the things you want to point to. Uh, you know, from a from an overflow, because I mean, alternatively, scale. If you don't have a software approach to give people a choice, scale is going to become a problem. Because what happens? Because Stewart's group is so good at marketing that they have so much uh, interest in people poking around uh, Myrtle Beach or any of the other destinations uh, that they they do marketing for that you would actually need multiple drones at the same time. Uh, you know, having the software solution as a secondary choice, I think, is interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or, or maybe uh, not, though, because me, the demand scarcity can be good demand creative, right? So you could get the buzz. Depends on what you're using it for, though. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. you're, if, you're, if you're in the B2B mode where you're using it to promote your region. So for Fly There, mm-hmm. sure, like if, if there's too much of a wait for one destination, they can promote another. Uh, but if you're, you know, visit Myrtle Beach, you don't want him showing other options to the people who are <laughs> no, no, waiting because no, so if, right. if you visit yeah. uh, Myrtle Beach, so that's the only. It's going to be uh, on their website. Right. It's not going to be. We're not going to show other mm-hmm. uh, locations to fly. But right. it's important also to know that we do offer people to uh, take uh, uh, photos and videos of their flight. And obviously, the resort can use the can use these photos. And mm. don't forget that there's going to be tons of user-generated content that's amazing that the resort can use to promote real live uh, photos in their social channels, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or whatever uh, they want to promote. But uh, I agree with you that uh, offline is also a possibility, 
but uh, it's a completely different experience than actually flying the drone. And if they're backed up by uh, the demand that is high, they can always bring in another drone and have two drones flying at the same time. Well, no. or, or you have the opportunity that um, a lot of the webcam folks did originally where you controlled it and other people could see it, right? You're having the session, you have control, but if it is on MyrtleBeach.com or something like that, it's like, yeah, we're showing this, here's what's going on on the, on the channel, um, sort yeah. of thing, so. Do you, do you, Tom, do you envision that you might go uh, the way of Google uh, uh, Cardboard where you drop the phone into and do the, bin uh, the binary view and people can fly you know, POV point of view kind of stuff? Do you, do you envision yourself going in that direction? Yes, definitely. That's on our roadmap. It's just a matter of priorities. And we decided to prioritize the mobile uh, flights before that because if you think about it, people usually prefer accessibility. Um, mm. you know, on things that they need to go and put that. So once it becomes more trendy, it's not an issue for us to do that. It's just at the moment we decided to go with uh, uh, letting you fly through your laptop or through your mobile device from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, Tal, tell, tell, we have to warn you about Lauren. Lauren has lots of creative ideas, okay? So <laughs> when, if, if you get him going, if you say yes to some of these, he's now going to go, well, you know, could you use these for, like, room service delivery at the same time? And you could do, Drop yeah. Pizza, so pizza, very, delivery. Very, pizza delivery, pizza delivery, yeah. It's a slippery slope with Lauren. So. I, love, I love to hear uh, creative ideas. I really uh, love I know it. he but, will find a way to try to use it for evil as well. So I'm Yes, it will be a video. Those are the two sides of how Lauren looks at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you arm this? And would it be available for uh, yeah, for yeah, drug yeah. drug cartel use? Yeah, yeah. 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 So now the other question to it is: Do you see yourself doing any land based stuff? I mean, uh, other than the flights, do you see yourself making? You know, uh, what is it? Ed, you have a little uh, iPad drone that you run around the office, don't you? It's a so robot. That, robot. Okay, sorry. Yeah. It's not a drone. Yeah. Okay, it's not a drone. You're right. It's, it's a robot. It's yeah. But do you, Tal, do you see yourself doing something where now there's a, a land component to this, where you can tour the hotel or you can tour an aspect of it uh, land-based without flying? Do you do you see yourself going in that direction at all? Definitely. I mean, Flyther is using drones just as the first step because it's a very convenient tool to use. I mean, because you're flying a drone through a screen, but mm. in the future we'll definitely have. Um, land vehicles, we'll have marine vehicles, uh, and we have all sorts of other ideas that will be really cool that can be uh, aligned with uh, some of the thoughts that I heard here in the <laughs> underline about <laughs> rules and stuff like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. and, and if I were yeah, you, I'd take Fly that. There, and anywhere that Fly There has, is uh, doing live drone flights, uh, I'd go ahead and sign to an affiliate network to just go ahead and get commissions off the bookings that you drive to that <laughs> area through your uh, commercial yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're driving little, the business, little sign up, a little sign up on the uh, the. Do they still call it Ian? Expedia's. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sign well, up, yeah. Sign up yeah. for Ian. Get your hotel booking commissions. Uh, you know, because all your drone flyers that are discovering these regions, it'd be great to have everyone they look at uh, be helping pay for your cost a bit. Tell, uh, I don't actually, know, I've, got, I've got one we, question. I've got one question right. in terms of the pilots. Are those fly their people, or are they, yeah, you know, employees of the DMO or the resort, or how does that how does that work? So uh, we work with the resorts. We can work in two different models. One is a turnkey solution where we provide the operator, and he'll be our employee. And one is where we just provide the software for the resort, and the resort uh, can uh, and we help train one of the uh, the staff of the resort to be the operator uh, and just provide the software. Great. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, I've the got to equipment, think, especially are they for leasing the equipment yeah, from you or, or do, do they purchase their own equipment? So it depends on which solution. If it's the turnkey solution, so it's our equipment. If they just license the software, so it's uh, their equipment. OK. That's great. It's very cool. I think, yeah. I think that addresses a lot of the, a lot of the concerns a lot of the folks would, uh, would have, especially if they. I've got to think for in the resort area having, especially having their own, uh, their own person doing it who could, you know, do other yeah, jobs during, and then also the time, also do this is a is during, great. during the time also that someone is flying, so you have a few minutes that the resort person can speak with him, 
and can answer him questions about the resort and promote the resort and tell him about special right. offers and what's the best time to come. And you know, you have someone that is talking with a resort person. Uh, so right. that's also some high quality time to help convert the person into uh, actual sale. Yeah, I got I to gotta thank the all-inclusive um, resort operators, especially when they have you know, everything from between overwater bungalows to you know, swim-up rooms to all sorts of you know, different. Uh, a lot of these resorts, you, know, you go to you know, Barcelo or something in Riviera Maya, they have you know, four, five, six different ho you know, yeah. different hotels, right? There are a couple hundred rooms in, the, in each module and you can show them, oh yes, here's the adults only, you know, only beach, here's the, you know, here's the kids area, here's the water sports area. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's great. Besides, now, those in the DMOs uh, I think are huge. Yeah, I agree with you with that. And also, you know, just seeing the area and seeing how beautiful it is for someone that's sitting in the cold or it, uh, you know, he's uh, in the city and he sees this open, beautiful resort, this turquoise water, water. Uh, it's just something that's mind-blowing, you know. Yeah, very cool. Very true. So does the tool itself, when someone, when someone wants to control the drone, does that live on the website of the hotel? Like how, how does that, or do they actually link out to your URL? So we are going to be embedded within the, it can be configured according to the hotel's requirement, but uh, it can either be hosted uh, within the hotel's, uh, you know, the flight page can be within the hotel website or they can uh, link it to our site. Every, anything can be configured. Right. Um, we have yeah, a okay. very strong uh, technological team that can do the professional services according to the requirement. It's really not an issue. But the thing is that the right. hotel uh, has on his website the ability to let users fly there and also when he's giving third parties affiliates to promote him he can also give them the button to promote the, the flights um, and by that mm -hmm. having them increase conversions dramatically All right very cool yeah i think i think for you know the folks watching this if you're you're interested in learning more and, and thinking about what is the value proposition obviously actually getting to drive it would be good to go there to the website and, and try it out but think about the PR push that you would get from this being an early adopter think about the SEO mm -hmm. juice you would get in terms of links from people interested in it and just sharing yeah. it and things like that so I think this is the kind of thing that I, you know I think we debated a little bit when we were in New York about is, is it for every hotel probably the Motel 6 on I-95 you know, not so probably not the <laughs> ideal solution. But if, if if you're slightly unique, you have you're in a resort destination, you, you, certain types of luxury. I think it's interesting. And then the sooner you jump on something like this, I think the more benefit you get from it. The, once everyone has it, it's not special anymore. So I think if it's something you're interested in, I would I would encourage you to evaluate mm -hmm. it now versus waiting for someone else in your town to do it. Well, and think about it the same way you would think about if you're a hotel that has jet ski rentals. You know, yeah, it's right. it's a it's it's something that uh, you can charge for to offset the cost on. Which I'm going to guess, you know, if you're going to try to do this long term, you'll get more juice off the charging for it than you will off of uh, the the long term marketing impact aspect of it. Because, quite honestly, once you have more than X number of like uh, flight tracks to look at. Um, you know, it, it starts to, as a marketing piece alone, it, it's going to be tough to, to maintain long term. Now, if you're charging for it as an experience on site, uh, you know, that's a completely different scenario, I think, for, for a long term, you know, use, using it multiple years uh, yeah. type thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't contradict. They're both viable, uh, you know, solutions, uh, which uh, I said before, it's a great, I think, service that, uh, you can offer your um, guests in the resort to fly a drone, which most people don't have or don't want to travel with it or, uh, you know, are afraid. They don't know if they can use it in the resort. So mm -hmm. like this, when it's supervised by the resort, it's a great solution for them. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. other figure too is that, and again, going back to the experiential kind of thing, I, I, I do a lot of 360 pictures uh, when I travel. And it's amazing, the, and, and I do it on Google's platform for doing 360s because it puts it in Google's map. Mm -hmm. And I, I still, to this day, I'm, I'm amazed by the fact that I took a couple of quick 360s when I was down in Sydney 
Australia or by the the uh, Opera House, and because Google had no street images that were that close by, there's a there's a, there's a third of a million people that looked at the the wow. 360 images that I put there, and it's like, <laughs> my God, that's crazy that every you know a third of a million people took the time to look at what I did as a quick 360 when I was standing there when I was just walking by, and and people want to see and want to experience uh, what it is that they do, um, yeah. So you know. It is one of those things where now they get to go over and do it live with the with the uh, with with the, with the drone. It makes it even more of a, a personalized event that they get to actually, you know, it, uh, tangibly say, "Oh, wow, this is really neat." I get to see what it is I'm interested in, in going to, and so forth. So, yeah, very much so. Yeah, technology is just continuously evolving. You know, when things are continuously evolving. So initially, the Google 360 was an amazing thing. So, uh, you know, uh, so many people wanted to see your photo, but the more you evolve and the more you bring in new cool tech stuff uh, that will allow you to get a more immersive experience, people will just uh, want to see it more. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you had a drone there down, down there now, it's like, again, people are like, oh, I'm thinking about going there. And then all of a sudden, oh, wow, look, there's a drone that I can fly around the, the opera house. Wow. You know, and then they get to, and it only validates like, wow, this is really something I want to go see and do. So Ed, with Flip2 and your photo, the things you do with photos and, experiences and so forth. Do you see this blending into that at all? Yeah, especially an expansion we're doing. So we're we're starting to make room for other media types inside our experiences to, you know, further inspire people. And video is one of those uh, media types that will be in those experiences. So yeah, I definitely see uh, it being able to work in to those experiences. Yeah. Neat, neat. Well, I mean, so, um, so Tal, if so you want to do a shameless plug and tell us how to find out more yeah. about your product. <laughs> sure. So um, first of all, anyone is uh, more than welcome to send us an email to contact at flythere.com. Um, everyone is uh, welcome to try and do a flight. Currently, we're offering free flights because uh, we're still in beta in our consumer site uh, in flythere.com. Uh, you just you can go now and fly and it's Cancun Resort that I was flying in. I just logged in as a regular customer and did a flight uh, during the, our conversation. So anyone can do that from wherever he is in the world. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically it. And the site, of course, is flythere.com. And, and because of the time zones and who you have available, it literally, as it goes around the globe, you have different locations that people can see based on the right. time of day. So during uh, the daytime in uh, America, it's usually Mexico, Argentina, Peru, Brazil. And during the evening time, it's usually Bali and uh, Thailand and soon also uh, Philippines. Wow. Wow. I just I, 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 think, I think about destinations and places. I mean, obviously, I, I think of things like Val, uh, Val Colorado, uh, Vail, Colorado and, and Aspen and places that want to showcase themselves whistler you know in canada you know where you get to show if people want that defining difference of seeing pictures versus experiencing the opportunity i see that you know places like that should be calling you up going hey look we'd love to put this up here what do we have to do because you know that gives them the chance to well, be different than everybody else in that market well I'll, I'll tell you right now it's one of our news news articles the mexican mexico tourist board is closing 28 offices, I believe. Um, they're, they're going to build a railway between Cancun and uh, use the money to build a railway between Cancun and Playa del Carmen. Um, so there's going to be a lot of need in Mexico for, for that, for <laughs> all the, yeah, every major destination down there. And those are you know, hundreds of thousands of you know, millions of visitors go in there. Um, and, and many are, you know, first time visitors too. Right. Mm. So, yeah, I think yeah. that the huge opportunities and for every one of those all-inclusive, the major all-inclusive resort groups um, where they really you know, want to explain what their property is, how things are laid out, um, what they have, a very, very compelling platform. Neat. Awesome. It, it reminds me, too, of like what was, what was the website that was doing real-time pictures versus the stylized picture? Oyster? What, Oyster? Oh, yeah, Oyster. Oyster. Um, yeah. 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 You know, this this is a way of validating what you're promoting as your resort in a real time way, because you can say, look, you know, don't take our you know images that we gave you, which is real pictures. But you can fly a drone and see what it is that we're actually talking about. You can see what you'd be experiencing. And of course, like you said earlier in the, in the, in the conversation, you know, you're not flying over trash cans. You're not giving them the backside of the house. You're showing them the part that the they prominent, would be the prominent yeah. areas that are the most beautiful ones. 
and you're letting them experience it for themselves. It's their own experience. They're flying it, uh, you know, and experiencing it uh, from their own uh, home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dal, thank you. I mean, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on. I know we were excited to have you when we, we talked about it uh, in New York when we first found out you fly drones over resorts. We're like, yeah, this is going to be cool. Uh, it, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, I think we flew over Brazil that time when we were in New yeah, York, right? Yeah, I think right? we did Brazil at the time, yeah. And it's like, that is just crazy fun. I mean, just and, – and again – for those who saw the early part of the, uh, the, part of the, the show where we're, we're actually showing the flight, the, the short stepness of it is because we're translating it through yet another medium and so forth. But if you do it, you know, if you go to the website, flythere.com, and you do choose to go over and fly the drone, it's as if you're flying your own drone. This is like I fly my drone out here. It's like you move and it moves. It's, and, and to consider that you're on this side, you know, so, many, so far away from the actual drone itself, it's very impressive technology that you get to do that. So Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. So at this point, we usually just start going into news items. So you're more than welcome to hang with us and, and uh, can, you know, give your opinion about it or, or you can bow out whatever you'd like to do. I know it's, it's relatively later for you than it is for us since you're in Europe. So uh, yeah, you're more so than welcome to hang with us. And I'm going to say thank you guys for having me on the show. I got to attend to a few things. But uh, thank you so much. Great talking with you guys, seeing you again. And Thanks for uh, having you on. Thanks for good. joining us. Yes, thank you very yeah, much for the time. So Yep. So, okay. You know your camera's off, right? Yeah, I'm, my I'm, it's getting wonky. Okay. I don't know. Bye -bye. My computer's Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sir. My computer started huffing and puffing, so I'm trying to close yeah. a bunch of windows and it's shutting down the video. <laughs> I couldn't hear what people were saying; it was all choppy. So <laughs> oh, uh, I don't want to reboot, so I'm trying to. You're trying to hang in there as you as you bring Stuart, it. Stuart, right Stuart, now. Stuart and I talked earlier. He's taking the approach. He wants to do. He wants to up the. Yeah, kind of the production value. So he's going to take the share <laughs> approach, and he's going to do uh, like costume changes during his show. It's going to be very, very cool. So, oh, wow. oh he, wow! He's probably getting into some you know slinky gold lame jumpsuit right now. So. <laughs> I can't think. Oh no! Oh. Oh, that can't be unseen. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm thinking app at this point, but in a bad way. <laughs> you know, if I did costume changes, it would be Star Wars related. So. That's oh, that's right. true. That's, that's true. Right. Okay, so a gold LeMay C3PO. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, mean, I would actually, Ed, as he was talking, I was thinking more about your, your expansion of media that you're, getting, you're talking about getting into. It's like that kind of experience driven, uh, you know, stuff would be kind of fun and different in that way because not everybody travels with a drone, you know. And, and getting those kind of pictures and so because I see it actually not being bastardized, but I see it being adapted where, you know, you know there's going to be a wedding of your family or something down you can't make it, and asking for the sequences where they can fly a drone and you can see it, you know, happening or something like that. I can see those things happening where, you know, you adjust the, the drone's limitation. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. <laughs> I, I still think I still think you, you gotta look at Google Street View style approach though. I think I think the answer to for him at least for bigger sales and bigger revenue opportunity is the eventual piecing together of enough routes to where a person can go and see all the angles uh, because here's the thing, the live aspect of it is only beneficial to what? See the weather, see what it's like. I mean, webcams can do that for much cheaper than having an employee there. So I think I if know, I, I think were him emotional connection to or if too. I was a, yeah, but to how many? I mean, uh, again, yeah. we're, well, we're chasing, if we're talking about for marketing alone. Now, that being said, I think as a resort property that offers experiences uh, that you can pay for, like, so, uh, you know, where was I last? Uh, South Seas and Captiva. When I was at South Seas and Captiva, there was a laundry list of experiences I could pay for to do. I could see fly a drone being one of those, uh -huh. uh, you know, right next to jet ski, right next to all of that. Um, yeah. Because, I, I mean, the challenge with uh, the model for just a pure marketing play is um, you're paying for an employee to be there. Right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So you're, this isn't a, this isn't going to be a low cost marketing effort. Um, so when you do break it apart and ask yourself, OK, why is this cool? Let's go beyond the I'm flying a drone thing. If you're only going for marketing. Uh, going beyond the I'm flying a drone aspect of it, the exploration of it is really cool. 
and uh, being able to see a real time representation of what the conditions are is really cool from a marketing perspective. But is it cool enough to pay the insurance costs, whatever the device costs are, whether it's lease or buy the employee costs without right. having a source of revenue? Uh, and right. if you even look, their site, Fly There, is already hinting to they're going to charge for drone flights and they charge yeah. for cutting in line, uh, which I think for their business of the consumer aspect of it, where consumers who want to fly drones in different parts of the world, like, yeah. yes, there is a consumer who will pay for that. But as a travel company, as a, as a hotel, a resort, a DMO, once you're past kind of the you know, hey, we're going to do this a couple of times because that's going to drum up interest. Um, you know, are you going to pay? I mean, because an employee who's certified, you know, for the flight drone, you know, thing, they're not going to be $6 an hour. Right. <laughs> you know, they're, <laughs> Don't so you're about, about, I mean, it's a, it's a substantial, it's a substantial um, investment. Uh, right. So you need to make sure you understand what the consumer gets out of it. And that's why I think the software development aspect of it, make it uh, like you like Google Street View, and then, you know, understand there are much more cost effective ways to get the real time aspect uh, of it. Yeah. yeah, well, I think, no, yeah, I, I think there are a couple directions, I think, between the DMOs and these large resort groups, right? If they're going and making this available, you know, they can do co-op things with Apple Vacations or something like that, where they can access a, either a lot of, you know, direct-to-consumer business, or even more importantly, the uh, the travel agents who can then wind up doing things either with with a potential client in office or, you know, yep. even doing again, it remotely, right? It's, it's you know, also all those balance. are doing. If you oh, over promote yeah, it, you're actually right. going to create a frustrating consumer experience because who wants to wait? I right. mean, really, like yeah. when you're talking about well, not wanting a, a alternative presented, which is a DMO would not want you to be able to go, well, you know what? I just want to fly a drone. So I'm going to go look at Cancun because they showed me Cancun sure. had an availability now. So this is like this is where I say, like, if you're going to use it as a marketing play, be very thoughtful about the fact that if you over promote it, you're going to create a challenging consumer experience because you may blow out two weeks of scheduling in the first half an hour of, you know, doing this campaign. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you over promote it, you have that problem. Uh, if you under promote it, you have an employee standing around waiting for someone to take control of a drone, um, you know, and they may be flying. But again, this is where I come in and say, if you record all of this and place it into right. a, you know, a virtual reality type standpoint, you get permanent value oh, for yeah. the spend oh, yeah. that you, that well, you capture. Live. Yeah, you capture it, it all and you go. Yeah, you capture it all and you go, you're in wherever, Baja or wherever, and all of a sudden there's a pot of whales out there. You keep that stuff and go, this, right. is, yeah, this is fantastic. Right, so this is where I'm saying, at, like, as an experience to offer, if you're a resort that yeah, yeah. experiences are a big piece of it. I was also thinking cruises, like, because mm -hmm. what, are, what are cruises thinking about? Cruises are always thinking yeah. about, okay, what do we have for on-boat experience for the people who don't want to go ashore today? Yeah, well, if it's in, in port, yeah, in port the drone the drone trying to keep up with the uh, with the ship going, uh, yeah, fifteen, yeah. twenty, eighteen knots, maybe I'm, a little tricky, thinking, <laughs> um, which I think is really interesting. But again, it's a it's a pay to play scenario. Uh, oh yeah, you know, because I I think someone like Lauren would pay thirty bucks to be able to fly a drone over fifty. All right, there you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that experience plus the marketing bump, you don't even have to cover your full cost, but I think recovery of expense oh, yeah. is yeah, an yeah. important aspect of this type of uh, effort. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. and, the, and it's the same thing. Like, so for DMOs, again, like it, I look at it like uh, the iDrive helicopter tour, right? It's that s sort of idea where it's always live streaming. So you're getting the marketing, but someone's paying to do it. Like, it right. I, I don't think the marketing value because of the uh, the bandwidth, uh, I don't think the marketing value alone um, long term. Now, I think little yeah. bursts of like getting the news coverage, getting the media covered, right. getting all of that. Like, yeah. yeah, that's going to be cool. But that that's a short that's window of opportunity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. And well, and once you do it more than once, the people who covered it before because they thought it was cool, 
they're not going to cover it again. So, yeah. so it's a mix like, and, and so I'm always thinking, you know, okay, long-term, long-term value, how could you maximize this? And I think it's a mix of paying, uh, having people pay for the experience, um, you know, and, you know, recording it, showing it. And, and if you can put it in software where people can go, you know what, I just want to look around. I want to see the angles because uh, it doesn't change enough to, to be worth the expense. Um, yeah. and, and it would satisfy that, uh, curiosity that people have. Cause it's not uncontrolled flight. Like, so like instantly I was thinking about, you know, what Lauren would do, he'd be finding the edges of where that pilot would allow him to go <laughs> every couple of minutes. So if you're, if you're in that situation where you're constantly finding the edges, then why not just have it be software? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, right. and then, you know, uh, but again, I think for a resort that does jet ski rentals and kayak yeah. rentals and all of that, totally. And zoos, I think zoos would be amazing. Yeah, right. I think, well, I think an exclusivity, exclusivity where you can't have other drones, right? Where that they're saying this is a drone-free zone except for our drone, right? Right. And they, right. they, they control it, which will be a big thing for these for these resorts, right? I think this is a stepping stone. I think it's a piece to a puzzle. I think, and it's in, in its current entity in its form. It has its limitations as we're talking about that there's certain you know specific value to it and that's it you know whether it's the temporariness of the pr or whether it's the uniqueness that it has as a front edge that it's not uh, everywhere but eventually through that avatar-esque way and just like game players and so forth putting themselves into a an artificial environment you're going to have people that because of either physical limitations and and think of it this way and i mean and i mean this in a positive way for those who can't be as mobile as other people are. This is a stepping stone technology of, of experiential value where you can experience something. Now, right now you're, you're limited by height and so forth, but taking your cruise ship example and putting a bunch of uh, people that maybe don't have the mobility they used to have when they were younger, cruise ship pulls up to a, a harbor and all of a sudden, a uh, freaking thousand drones lift off from the cruise ship. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You don't because want that image going. Let's, in not, let's not let's not do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> what I'm but saying, this is, but this is what I'm out. saying about this. Like when you look at this and you look at this investment, you should always be looking at what's the long term uh, yeah. gain I can get from this investment. How can I reuse it as much as possible? Because it, I can't imagine it's cheap. Like because it has right. humans involved in it. Right. But know, right. and, I, I think there's a reason that it's it's not there's not a US based hotel yet. Right. If you look at where they are, the cost of labor is cheap mm -hmm. in the destinations yep. that it's in. Right. Well and liability. Right. right. Because here's the thing, when you say no one's drones can be here except for ours and then someone crashes your drone. Like, right. man, you're leaning even further into liability. Well, and and the privacy issue, right? So you're buzzing over the beach, and there are a bunch of people who have not authorized necessarily that they can be filmed. I know. Right? When Lauren said, hey, let's go over and look at the adults-only section, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> but, so, so I definitely think it is, I think it, it is a viable thing, but I think you need to have a real plan, like most things. Right. You need to have right. a real plan on how you're going to optimize the opportunity uh, to not come out the other end scratching your head going, what did we get out of that? Right. Yeah, because this isn't something that you can scale where the resort is going to have a thousand drones and let all the people have it, right? It's going to be right. relatively limited for, you know, a couple. And again, the scarcity helps drive up the cost and things. Well, like, I mean, and quite honestly, pricing, scale, still, I think, is going to be tough of, uh, above three or four. You know, right. because here's oh, the thing. Exactly. it doesn't sound like you can set software that keeps them away from each other. So <laughs> you need to trust. Oh, no. I, think, yeah. I, mean, I, think right. some, I think technology well, will catch up with this. I mean, already right now, some of the, the newer drones that are coming out, the software that's loaded up there, like Mavic Pro uh, 2 and stuff, it has a proximity sensors around it that before, when you fly a drone, you can run into a, a power wire, you can run into a tree. This thing dodges stuff and flies, and you can set it up now where okay. you walk, it'll follow you. And if you go underneath a tree, it'll duck down okay. and come yep. around and stuff. Yeah. So it is improving. And the, the issue, to your point, is, is of, of, of safety is like right now you have to keep it away from everybody. Okay. But eventually, through you know, casing the blades and, and making them lighter, so even if they bump into somebody, they're not going to hurt somebody, whatever it is, eventually all this technology based on adoption is going to step in and event and you're going to bring that drone down lower and more engaged. And eventually somebody's going to go over and say, Hey, I want to know what that hotel's like. And they're going to fly through a hallway at a hotel. They're going to but fly why? around the 
but this is my thing. Why okay. do they need to be able to do that? If if nothing has changed, why right. do you need the live aspect? Is where I'll always go with this. Like yeah, Rory, right your now. your own story about your three hundred and sixty degree getting a quarter million views, yeah. and Google's right. own Street View process shows right. that the majority of the value comes out of being able to see it. And this is where I think again outside of charging for the experience, okay? Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong here. I absolutely 100% see this as a pay to play, great way to, to offset most of the cost of it through that channel mm -hmm. and get marketing benefit from live right. streaming all these people who pay to, paid to play. Um, but once it's recorded, unless something has changed, it does yeah. not need to be live. The The upside of live versus the downside of what it means, you can't fly a drone through a hallway without violating people's privacy, which then means you have well, to, and the noise, you have the to noise inconvenience your guests in order to allow live fly-throughs, or you have to make people wait. And again, people don't wait. What do we talk about constantly on the most important thing for your website and things like that? It's speed, it's snappiness, because people don't even want to wait milliseconds. Okay. So. I but I think what we're talking about is like we're right now talking about what it's like to ride a horse, and Henry Ford's over there with a car. I'm 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 being optimistic about the technology development. No, that, you're you're being blinded by blinded. the shininess <laughs> of a new idea, and you're not thinking through <laughs> the yeah. operational <laughs> aspects. <versus laughs> Lauren has <laughs> never been accused of jumping onto a shiny object. No. Oh, so, no. so again, no. I don't want people to think I'm I'm speaking negatively of this uh, this oh, idea. No, 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 no. I definitely think no, as I, a pay to play experience, your travelers will pay to fly these drones. One hundred percent, I believe that, it, and I bet you, you can probably get close to the cost basis that you're getting for your jet skis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so. And then I think you can get marketing impact from them paying for that, especially if you, not launch, if, if you launch. If you launch the drone, if you launch the drone where it shows the person who's flying it, like as part of the experience, that gives the user generated content feel of it. Um, but I do not think, like, let's not let's not talk about technology is not limiting us from being able to fly drones up and down hallways. Um, you could do that today. There's no benefit to doing it. Because first okay. of all, name a hotel hallway that's worth saying, hey, why don't you go walk <laughs> down our hallway? So uh, Vegas, you go into the lobby area, it's pretty pristine, you know, but- Record it once and it's I, done. One of the variations I thought of this drone stuff would be kind of fun is like, and I'm in Cancun, I'm gonna go on a jet ski or those jet boots, okay? I'm gonna be an epic failure on riding jet boots. But you know what? Fly the drone and take pictures of me having epic failure on that's the jet boots. That's what I'm saying, pay to play. But, Okay, but here's here's we're looking at current technology, and I, I completely agree with you at current technology levels, all the limitations and all the conditions that you have on it. What I'm saying is, is that like 360 at a, at a concert is going to happen. There's going to be a post with a 360 camera, and somebody's going to charge because so they're already doing that, where you get to be at the concert, but you're not really there, and you're wearing some yes. POV goggles. So you're you, so you're telling me that hotels should look at investing in a technology that makes it to where someone doesn't have to come to their hotel? Not at all. What I'm saying is, is that for people to make the decision process of what it would be like to be there, just like right now we do video conferencing, just like we have to be somewhere where we can't be there. The same methodology of, of experiencing whether or not a hotel or destination has the perspective of interest that you want. And you're saying that has to be live. Then you buy the pictures that you give. And you're saying not that has to be live you. to drive all that impact. What's that? You, it has to be live to drive all that impact? Not at all. It has to be a part of the process, not all of the process. Mm -hmm. It is a component of it, not necessarily a replacement of it. I don't think that all of what we're doing, look at what we're doing. Just I, I, doing. I think you're getting impressed. obsessed with the wrong anyway. thing here because, uh, again, with software, you could take care of a lot of what the live aspect would be, which You're is I want to look at this angle. At all. I want to look at that angle. So I want a static I web, wanted to webcam. go here. Right. But, I mean, even right now, I have more demand for doing 360 tours than I have for taking images of a hotel. The advancement sure. of the engagement yeah. that people want is going into video, just as you're putting video into your product. We yeah, went from absolutely. I agree. Video. Where I disagree with you is that it will ever be necessary to allow someone to drive a robot or fly a drone through a live public area as a way to sell your hotel. Because. Right. 
you're going to then have to invest in AI technology that as soon as it sees someone's face, it blurs out or you're violating people's privacy. Yes. Exactly. Right? So, so where does the benefit stop being worth the huge uh, expense and inconvenience? I can't make a family member's wedding in Cancun. It's on the beach. I'd like to kind of be there. You do, so, not, yeah. You do yeah. not. You do not my, want a drone that somebody else is controlling over your. My professional your, photographer yeah. can fly a drone right there, and I don't need to be driving it to get right. to see oh, that. Do not disagree. I'm not saying the condition right. of having to personally fly it is necessary, as it is answering your question. If I want to be, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that's but that's a charge. <laughs> echo, it's a pay to echo play. what Ed's saying. Yeah, it's Stuart's a pay to play yes. because. Uh, and, and for a wedding, I'm feeling to sorry have for the, the audience. Added, it's, a big, yeah, it's a big thing. <laughs> so, so again, I want to be clear. I think his consumer facing site is brilliant. I would, to help him raise money, if I were him, I would be like affiliating with someone who has inventory who will pay commissions. So, once yep. he's helped someone drone that area, he can do a hey, you should come here. <laughs> yep. And for the small percentage of people who would be like, yeah, now I'm totally going there, boom, make right. your money there. I think yep. he's he should introduce the charging model, but I think for the B two B aspect, it needs to be a multifaceted strategy yes. because oh, you're yeah. not going to pay forty grand a year for a full time employee, absolutely, who, who's only going to be able to fly it not every day because weather is going to affect that. He's not going to fly it a lot at night unless there's something going on that makes it worth seeing at night. Right? Um, Maybe you know, with the thermal so cam. If you're not if you're not charging for the experience, it's gonna be hard to justify long-term. Yes. Single, you know, poppy, fun things, like to get, you know, buzz out and things like that, I, I completely see it. I am completely on board with it. But if you're like talking about hiring an employee to permanently offer this service, you gotta be charging for it. Let me ask yeah. you something. If yeah. right now you had the chance to fly a drone over Machu Picchu, would you do it? Sure. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I'm go there. Don't get me wrong. It's the not folks at either there, the, the folks at Sanctuary Lodge or Machu Picchu would want you to do that. Though. But but right. Lauren, there would be a Lauren, big backlash. Let me also. let me point out: if I had to wait two weeks in queue to get it, versus oh. versus I can just go into a software and explore it. Oh no! Okay. Or just watch somebody's flying right now, and I can see it now yeah. live. Somebody's I mean, flying. A, a whole, I don't have control, but what, I can, what, I can what see what's going on. As a kid that plays video games, and millions of kids watch him play the video games. That, right. Think of that. <laughs> these things are not armed, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Which like it when mommy and daddy fight. <laughs> so, so uh, to be clear, as a marketer. If you're if you're a person watching this show, one of the four, oh, there's four of us. No one's watching the show. Yeah, right. um, if you end up so watching this in, in recording, nonsense. I want to be yeah. clear. I think what they're doing is a great idea, and I think you should explore doing it if you have a visually interesting resort or destination. What they're proposing, you need to go beyond that. Like right. you yes. need to, because you're not going to get return on investment off of just offering people to be able to come in and take control you you just won't see enough you need to figure right. out how to make that have long-term impact you need to figure out um how you can charge for the experience um because otherwise you won't be able to justify promoting it because you're instantly going to put once someone has to wait more than an hour you're going to lose i bet 60 percent of the people who oh, like Lord. saw it and were like oh this is cool i want to do this oh i gotta wait an hour eh. You know, like so, so what Ed's saying is, you should have a strategy before you jump into any new initiative. Right? Yes, yes. Period. Yes. yes. Well, see, this is you want to make, money. make money. If you want to make money, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And you in your because in your specific location, though, yeah, in your specific guess, location, right. can look at all of the downsides. Okay, Cancun is great. Play it all, Carmen. Over the right. waters, fantastic, fantastic. Except you're not. There are people in Orlando. Because no, first except, of all, over the theme yeah. parks is all restricted airspace, There's and no, then yeah. all the hotels' roofs are ugly. Right, yeah. <laughs> like <they're, laughs> they have air conditioning units on them, and they're flat. And they're so, flat. Yeah, nothing yeah. you have, but drones and parasailing operations are not a good combination. No. Right? <laughs> I mean, you 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 have all sorts of potential downsides on the, yeah, actually, the liability. You, so you got to be very you, you now. And about, again, yeah. the, 
the rules in Mexico are much different than they are in the U.S. Yeah. I don't but, know but, about the Seychelles and the Maldives. I'm sure you go to those selfie, areas, you can do some great, some amazing with things. With the selfie there. nation that we are now, the selfie world that we are now, the people want experience. The, the drones themselves have programs that allow for following you while you're jogging or running so that you can do your 360 so shots. Out, those things you, aren't, yeah, rent they aren't going to go right somebody there. parasailing, though. They Why not? Pick that up. Actually, and Robert, you you talk about the not being fast enough, but a couple of guys that I do track days with actually have drones that stay over their car as they're track day. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so that's and, getting and, and up. Oh, no, I know. Drones can go freaking 90 miles an hour. Yeah. They can yeah, go. Then the batteries drain miles. really quick. So then you go. Yeah, the batteries and the batteries are the issue. But the idea is this. If I want to ski down the slope, I want, I want that panoramic, you know, now you have a drone pilot in your on your on your property. And, so there's these and drones skiers, them, and, and you have skiers do not want a bunch of drones following them around when that's they're the thing. Skiing, when they're skiing chest drones. deep, chest deep, they don't want anybody's <laughs> drone over uh, them while they're on. Uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, just one serious. more. Yeah, one last one last point. The the luxury end too. I think you go more mass market. The the luxury end thing. You are going to get guests who do not want this. They don't want to be seen. They do not want to be disturbed. Get that damn noisy thing out of here, right? So, but I think on the large, all inclusive resorts, the big main market things. I think I think it's a winner. So, cool. There we are. <laughs> if you do what if you do what Ed says and augment your revenue streams, because you have to, to have a strategy. ROI. Yeah. As yeah, always, okay. it's great that we have an inspirational topic for this, and we do appreciate Tal having shown up for it because it does bring up all the questions of variabilities, and we all uh, definitely have different uh, bullishness and lack of interest. So, so I do, before we get into Robert's pre-prepared list for news, he missed <laughs> an important announcement uh, uh, that someone on this show is very equipped to talk about. And Robert, I don't know how you missed this and how you left it out, but there was a huge announcement that came out at 7.31 this morning about Fuel's new mobile app and digital key. Well, considering I, I sent out the thing about five or six hours before that, that was a problem. Well, I want to talk about Fuel's, Fuel's new mobile app and digital key. I, I, oh, I, it's super Lord. fresh, super now. It just got announced. It's called. Who knows Pro. about this? Wait, Anybody wait. You know that knows does, this about this? does this use a drone where you can no, open No drone for her drones? in the manufacture oh. of this oh, no. product. <laughs> so, Stuart, tell us. I saw the announcement yeah. this morning. What? Give me the, the big impact of what you guys have done on this new version. <laughs> I felt like you're overselling a little bit. This is not a self promotional <laughs> show. But, so, essentially, I'm not what we promoting did, myself. I'm genuinely true. interested now you're making in me something it. you announced. Yeah, so, so we've had a mobile app product for, you know, a couple of years now, and, and it's it's done the basic things like check in, check out, being able to book. We're actually seeing a lot of folks booking on the mobile app now, and this, this is all for independent properties, not for, for change. So anyone that says mobile apps have no place for independent hotels, I've got a lot of data that would contradict that, but mm -hmm. people are downloading it, people are well, checking to be clear. in. Mobile People apps that are nothing more than just a recreation of the information yeah, on your sure. website are, right. have zero value. Garbage, right? You got to have mobile apps need to be that. worth the download. Right, it's got to be value. Um, but what we've done is we partnered with um, Asset Abloy and um, gone through their certification program. So if you basically have any of the Ving locks, any any anything manufactured by Asset Abloy now, you can use our mobile app as a digital key, um, just like you can at Marriott and Hilton. So it's a it's a you know, it gives parity to independent hotels that want to compete with Marriott's and Hilton's and, and offer the same level of convenience. So basically, guest comes, checks in via the phone. Depending on your rules and regulations, they may still have to come to your front desk and uh, show ID. But then as soon as the property gives you permission, you can go straight to the room and, and open by a low light uh, Bluetooth. So that's pretty fun. We've been testing it for a while. works. We've got it deployed in a few properties now. So it's it's neat. And and poor Ed, he thought it came out this morning. It was the the well, announcement we, we was February twelfth. He's on our he's on our um oh. he's on our email distribution list. So the email went out okay. today. We, there was a press oh, release yeah, about it. Yeah. Press yeah. release yeah. on the twelfth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, it's it's a fun new project. I, I'll be honest, I wasn't always the most um, bullish on on mobile app when we started the project. I felt like we had other initiatives that were maybe a little more um, pressing, but I, I would 
I've been pleasantly proven wrong on this one because I'm a guy that always follows the data and lets the data dictate. And there just wasn't conclusive information about it when we launched. But now, listen, I mean, check I, in, I get a report check in, day, check out, and mobile key. I can tell you this from all the hotels that we interact with guests after their stay, and we mm -hmm. always give you the feedback capability of, hey, is there anything we could have done better? The things that affect it the most negatively end up being check in, check out because yep. people don't want to wait in line forever. Yep. A lot of times, unless you need something, you, you don't even want to talk to someone. Um, right. so, so just that aspect of it alone, I think, uh, gives it a, a yeah. really compelling story for hotels because- There's a lot of value, for sure. It, the impact, oh, yeah. like, like we were looking at over a couple of years of data and how much, uh, negative impact a bad check-in check-out experience can move your overall NPS score and it's like 10%. Yeah. 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 So if you're yeah. not doing Primacy it, well, and recency. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh so you know I I'm with you Stuart like I a lot of the mobile apps I I wouldn't see well, right? it. It's like right. it's like the people that but, say uh, people don't book on mobile websites like no it's right. because your mobile website is garbage you know right. or your mobile so, booking so engine is garbage. high quality mobile apps because nothing infuriates me more than pulling a mobile app and having it be nothing more than a pdf of your menu or <sighs> yeah, a PDF, right, yeah. of a flyer talking about things and there's no ability right. to go deep there's no function um, yeah right. no functionality there's no benefit i can't yeah in most cases can't even chat with you like there's nothing like no, it's right. nothing more than a framed it's version a brochure, of the yeah. site. Yeah, yeah, it's a brochure. Yeah, yeah it's a brochure so it, it's cool. Brochure. But I will say this too, going back to Ed's point earlier, I hate to bring up the drones again, but um, you, if, if, if mobile app is something you want to <clears throat> look at for your property, you really have to think through the strategy of one, how you're going to promote it, but two, what impact it has on the guest in terms of the communication with the property, in terms of the touch points they have with property. So for example, we've had clients that have been using the check-in process on the mobile phone, but then forcing the guest to refill out a, a registration card when they get to the property, oh. which creates mm -hmm. extra friction yeah. that wasn't necessary. They'd be better off not having the mobile app in that scenario. You know, right. so you've really got to think through um, and, and this is one of those products that, that crosses boundaries between the marketing team and the operations team. So you've got to make sure that there's alignment between the two. You mean much like often a guest there experience? Isn't, right, right. right. <laughs> like everything should be, right? right. Um, but, but isn't. Um, but what we're seeing is some, some of the folks that are signed up, and we've got, you know, 100 plus properties using our mobile app now and um, you've got certain properties that are all about it and the whole team rallies behind it and they, they develop a cool strategy and it's really effective and then you've got teams that are like the marketing guys are like nope this is operations and the operations that go nope we're not touching this this is marketing play and and it kind of you know just sits there it doesn't really do a whole lot so you really got to make sure the whole team is in a, in alignment and have a strategy like for example what? if you're going to offer mobile check-in but you still need to see an id then don't make the guest wait at the back of the line to show you what right. I need. Have an express yeah, check-in lane, line. stuff yeah. like that. You know, right. yeah. so it does take some effort from the property to make sure that logistics of the app are implemented the right way, but it does a phenomenal job. And there's a demand. People are downloading it. People are using it on average. Sure, people are opening the app me, 10 times plus during the, you, the stay. Can you shoot me an email of any of our clients in common? Because I want to look at guest sets. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. because I want to see, because I'm telling you, especially in the market that I'm guessing you have this heavily distributed in, mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, check-in issues and checkout issues are like giant dings that happen yep. a lot. And so I want to watch yep. those properties over the upcoming busy season and I'll report yep. back to you, like what we saw versus last year. Yep. So that way you can tell your, your partners what the okay. impact beyond the obvious impacts, what other impacts yep. were trackable okay. on. Yeah, I can talk to you after the show. There's two of your clients specifically are doing, going to be baitering the um, the keyless entry stuff as well in the next couple of weeks. So I have right. some questions. Um, when it comes to app and its engagement with the data that you have on your website, from a GTM shell point of view, from engagement, actions, events, mm -hmm. goal setting, stuff like do you have crossover tracking that you have? Like, do, does the app pull data from the site or is, it, is all the data? No, it's, it's separate. The so, so you set up your own, a separate Google Analytics account for... For the app itself so you oh, can still itself. still see similar behavior because it has the booking engine embedded it has a lot of functionality and, and you want to track behavior 
um, but we don't we don't mix that in with the website traffic. It's do we have the advocacy one. touch installed on your booking engine? Yeah, we got a call? couple of clients that that have. So so our app is basically it's a custom framework, so you can brand it however you want. You know, change the colors, the tiles, and um, one of the things you can do is basically embed a web experience into the app okay. under one one of the tiles. So. That's how we integrate with Flip2. So if you wanted to show guest stories, it literally takes, if you had Flip2 and you signed up for the app, it would literally take you less than a minute to go into the back end, add a new tile, and just grab the URL that your your stories are in and, and have it awesome. live to your audience. Yeah, That's cool. And, and so all the tracking that you have for your app is distinctly different tracking than you have. Like, how do you just, dis the booking engine usage from your app for your booking engine usage from your site when it comes to tracking? It, it, we just keep it completely independent. So the okay. the booking engine itself is the same code, but because through URL variables we're dictating, it's being embedded in the app. So we just switch out the GTM code to make sure it's looking at the app version, not the web-based version. Not web version. Okay, cool. Yep. And the other Actually, question is, like, go ahead. I, I, uh, I was going to say, is that, can, could you not eventually, from a face recognition point of view, Pull from their social accounts, their images, or their, their yeah. This is a couple of things we're looking at. There's a couple of things we're looking at right now um, related to that. So one of the one of the things is showing ID and verifying um, who you are from a security standpoint. And there's some areas where you don't have to show it at, at property, but they still want to verify the the identity. So we're looking at a, a partner right now that does this cool thing where you can take a self take a photo of your ID and then do a 3D mapping of your face um, with the phone, and it verifies that it's the same person. Which well, is I was from, the, from your facial recognition with your phone that you can use the phone authentication. Well, first of all, your phone's your phone's facial recognition is not accessible um, to actually do yeah, the verification apps. you're yeah. thinking of. So understand, like, Why? because Apple restricts it. No, they don't. I got apps all over the place that use it. They're using they're like banking apps and stuff. They're, sure. they're using the um, the just verification of is the device owner approving this? Right. It's not telling you that that device Except owner is the person owner. who it says it is. Yeah, it is because I might. I I, I, did, I, I technically disagree. No, no, no. Hold on, it, Lauren. The Lauren. Oh, here goes mommy and daddy again. I can, again. I can tell <laughs> Stewart. I can tell my bank that. Um, it, well, first of all, that's not good because bank checks my my. Uh, so Facebook, I can tell Facebook that I'm Stuart, okay, and then I can as create a login. Does. I can create a login for that account, and I can say that this phone is allowed to access that login, you know, through that exchange. That does not say that I am Stuart. Stuart's talking about a problem where hotels are required yeah. to verify that the person who made the booking and is checking in is actually that person. Your right. phone is not does not know you are who you say you are. It just right. knows the things that you gave it the the access to do that call to that you knew the uh, the access to it. Like I could set my phone up to do Face ID to log me into my wife's account if I had the username and password. That does not right. mean the phone is saying I am Andrea. Yeah, and right? if and like, a face and a Face ID doesn't work, you can go use you know your swipe pattern or, or password you, or whatever you, you to get in. Password, yes, I agree with that, but, but that's the difference of having yeah. access versus verifying you are who you say you are are two right. very different things. And where I was saying don't do what you were talking about is don't go grab facial recognition and things like that. Uh, like that's like real personally identifiable information. And if you're not storing it right, if you're not handling oh, it right, if you're not giving the correct disclosures, you're violating major laws that have stiff penalties. So that's why I jumped on you when you were like, couldn't you just do this? Like, no. You, you could, technically you can. <laughs> However, you should not be dabbling in that uh, with unless you are prepared to put the correct care and compliance into how you do it. I, I don't disagree with you. I was gonna go for a urine sample next, but I figured you know, why go that far. Uh, <laughs> it, wait, actually, um, yeah, one, if you pee one on question, your phone, the app will, will definitely the app will do it. One, one Apple mobile app question, does Apple have instant apps now Google has done some really interesting stuff with their with their instant app capability where you don't have to have the app installed it will dynamically download from the web and things like that in portions again because um, 
at least on Android, the the update for apps is now you know the little chunks of code that were updated, right? right? Which I think Apple is a little bit more. Yeah, you need the whole payload of the app to get up to. So Google's kind of moved ahead in that. I was just wondering if Apple had something where you. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll be honest. Yeah. It's very, very cool. I, I've now seen the instant app thing run on a couple of websites where you know, I haven't had the app loaded, but it'll go up. And you know, In some cases, um, one of them asked me if I wanted to download the app, and I kind of, you know, I've hit an X on that, and then it, it came up with like a little instant app thing, and boom, it was there. And you had a native app experience, but... I hadn't asked for it, and it you know worked just like a web page, right? It was, so does it, it stay on your cool. home screen still? Does it take up real estate on the home no, screen? No, no. It just yeah. really on your website, it, it basically, instead of loading the code, you know, the HTML that's coming off of that page, it, it does download, you know, enough of a, a kernel or a module of what you're yeah. using that app for at that point um, relatively quickly. I mean, it, it, there was not a big lag, and all of a sudden it was like, "Wow, this this looks exactly like the app." So it's funny, which is, yeah. I mean, and I would think with predictive, is, uh, what these guys are doing with predictive analytics, there, right? Yeah. Well, but they also have what's predicted to load next. So if you if you're a yeah, booking yeah. engine or something like that, yeah, here's the home page, and yeah, you know, it's loaded up maybe right, destinations rate, or whatever, whatever yeah. preloaded certain things, and then it yeah. goes, yeah, well, I I better start loading some other right. stuff because everybody goes to. Or whatever next. Right, and I think there's certain features that that's fine for, right? But then there's certain things that not for your door to lock. The, to yeah, the well, device, maybe for door lock. Like yeah, you I couldn't do the door lock because it requires access to the chips on the device, which right, the web yeah. browser doesn't have access to. You right, know, so right. there's certain certain things. And you things. don't want you don't want the web to have access to. <laughs> no, and this yeah, exactly. this native this native app thing, I think you can wind up doing that. But again, I don't know how. I haven't dug into it deeply enough to see where they draw the. Where they yeah, yeah. There, the, there's a there's a couple of trade offs on, on, when you're doing with native apps and things for sure. But so yeah. so so not to continue to to be a uh, a news hog here, but uh, another thing I didn't see in your news there, Robert, was the foldable. There's a lot Samsung, of news. The foldable yeah. Samsung phone. That is the That's coolest right. thing I've ever seen. It is really. It's only, is. It's only two thousand bucks. Like, don't Why get obsessed you? with that. The fact that they were <laughs> able to make something oh, yeah. they could sell. Like where it would have enough quality, like I mean, oh, now yeah. it's Samsung, so we like it will probably go up in your pocket. Right. But but they were able to mass produce something at least in a batch big enough to make it. They're gonna sell a limited amount of this version of it. Oh, sure. But a right. phone that opens up, and I have you guys seen you the video? See, of it? Yeah, you can't yeah. see the theme at all. The, it's it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And the impact that's going to have on this continuing move of the domination to mobile device. Oh, yeah. Ooh. And then well, even they you raise the think bar about, for Apple. Apple well, is going to have some challenges. And software here. experience. Like, so, like, even yeah. Samsung talked about the challenges in like, doing this, made them have to fundamentally rethink the operating system and how it flows and the user interface on it. That's going to have that same impact on the web, on oh, apps, yeah. like on yeah. all of that. Um, you know, granted, this isn't a today, tomorrow, this year's problem, but I wouldn't be surprised if two years from now we weren't talking about uh, the challenges everyone's having redeveloping their stacks <laughs> to to deal with the fact that now you have a multi-screen device, yeah. a multi-screen yeah. a multi-screen yeah. mobile device. Yeah. Um, yeah, your responsive, yeah, yeah responsive. It's already web design. a challenge. Right? I need to get more Bad responsive. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> when, yeah. when the same device can have multiple screen sizes, mm -hmm. and if you look, they had the 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 front of it had a certain dimension screen, and then you fold yeah, it over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. so now think about that as a new tracking point. That will be a new tracking point in how you look at how successful you are in engaging someone. Oh, yeah. If they move yeah, from like, the front screen. Yeah. If you got them to unfold, like that's a yeah. huge uh, data point. That's going to be yeah. really interesting to have. Yeah. Um, it's pretty interesting. I think there's a yeah. there's a a lot of potential impact coming in this mobile arena. That's I think is going to be as challenging for our industry as the actual going mobile right. has been. So, so you think me, this might have more legs, more legs than Google Glass, huh? I think so. I hope so. Yeah, my Google sure. Glass <laughs> is still 
in a cabinet. Uh, doesn't do anything. I just anyway, want to link the video on YouTube for the Samsung folding phone. But yeah, to its point, you're going to be measuring whether it's on the small screen or the other screen. But think about this. That kills the, the iPads and tablets for the most part. That market goes away. Uh, yeah, well, iPads, iPads one just device, with the larger right? screens, the larger, you know, they screens, the, 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 yeah, the larger mobile ones hurt hurt iPad and tablet sales. Yeah, they uh, might survive, but the small, the so, mini versions and all that stuff no. probably will go away. Well, too. and the larger tablets all became basically notebook computers, right, with yeah. surfaces and things like that. I mean, the big right. question is whether the iOS for Apple phones and tablets transitions into uh, the iOS for laptops and stuff like that. Is, is there going to be a singularity to OS platforms at that point? You know, is the is the in the the user experience engagement going to turn into that mobile version of itself, or is it going to stay into the laptop desktop version of itself? I still I'm still surprised we haven't gotten to a point because computing has become so powerful on these devices that we haven't gone to the brick format, where like yeah. why aren't monitors set up that I can just put my mobile phone down and it be yeah. Well, yeah. now the, the newer, the, the, who is it that's doing that? Uh, getting Google, was it Google? Crap, was it Samsung or Google? Google was trying to do some of the Surface technology. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you just this put is the where phone cloud phone services. And you go to yeah. the dumb terminal for it. I mean, I don't know about yeah. you guys, but like I no longer store anything on anything. Like everything right, cool. on my computers, everything on my phone, it's all in cloud. And yeah. that's so I can have it everywhere. So why can't I just walk up to a device, put my phone down, and have it be my environment safe, right. meaning it's not accessible by whatever the rest of the display right. stays is local. doing. Right. Well, um, just imagine, boy, if a hotel could do that where you had a mobile app where you, you could check in and then you just put it down and you could see Netflix and everything on the screen. And yeah, hotels aren't quite there yet, but they need to be. <laughs> I, 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 but this I, is I, where I, these that's these where it has the to be. Like so, Stewart's announcement got me excited because I was I knew a little bit about the the changes in the mobile app and the deal with Ass Abloy and stuff, and, and that's super exciting. Um, but the Samsung thing, like this is exciting. This this is a preview of two years from now, three years mm -hmm. from now, however oh, yeah. long it takes them to to smooth it out. Um, this is a preview of that. You're now talking about a device being able to change what kind of device it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I think well, it'll be interesting to see their patents too, right? So if they've patented this to to try to box out um, Apple, or if they've made it loose enough where they're hoping Apple will follow well, they, and more people will do it, well, they I think sell. that'll be a very. Don't forget, they provide Apple most of their screen technology for the oh, right. iPhone. So they oh, yeah. they want to sell this to Apple. They want to be manufacturing oh, yeah. these. Uh, yeah. You yeah. won't see Apple in an iPhone. Oh, no, that's do this. Yeah. For four right. years from now, I I'm, I'm going to eventually. Say it, you know. Eventually, this is just stepping stones to the fact that you're going to be either wearing a watch or having a pin on your shoulder like Star Trek, or something, and you're going to walk up or carry anything that just transfers whatever that is there to whatever it is you're holding or walking up to. Because yeah. you know whether it's a handheld device, whether it's a wall device, whether it's a desk device, it's you're carrying it always. A scroll. You're going to put, it, put it anywhere. Yeah. Or, well, yeah. <laughs> and, and just be there. <laughs> a fan. Or, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't want to miss Robert's list because he actually put together some pretty good stuff. He did cool have some stuff. good stuff. So I'm sorry. Those yeah. were just two things I wanted they to were say. Cool. That's, that's yeah. fine. I, I didn't cover any of the political happenings this week either. So. <laughs> well, Tim, you, you get Tim was on the show. Tim was on things, the show. Things happened to exactly. this week. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> So, Robert, what do you want to pull out of the grab bag of happiness? Oh, no, no. I prepared a list. You guys, I, what's interesting to... To you I guys. Didn't, I, I, how the war, how the war to school story. still refers to the sharing economy uh, is concerning to me. Yeah. At first, when I saw the tagline of how the sharing economy is transforming the short-term rental industry, instantly, like I, I'm like, oh god, is this a skift article? Because like, who still calls it the sharing economy? Right. Um, oh, it's an old. It's an old professor, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I yeah. didn't. I didn't. I didn't see why the top story was the top story. Which let me go share the link, um, because it seemed a little bit like really. I don't. I don't. I don't see anything out of this. I thought that there was, were some pretty. I thought there were some pretty interesting stats in there, though. Where you know, seven in ten millennial business travelers want to stay in local host rentals. So, what are all the hoteliers focusing on? Hey, we're building cooler millennial-oriented, you know, sort of things. And it's like, uh oh. 
Um, and why do they want to do this? They want to stay in an unusual place. Hotels generally have become usual places, right? That's a that's a problem. Um, they want to feel at home, away from home. That was always certainly something hotels you know, always said they wanted to uh, attract. But they also want to stay in a local neighborhood, right? So, um, you know, those are those are important uh, functions that these hoteliers have to have to figure out. So, but do they though? Do they really have to worry about it? Like, I, I think they, I think they kind of have off. to. I think they have to worry about it because it's it's scooping off a section of the. But the, but listen, all right. So this is a section I, I read of the, the article, and, and I was like, you know, I'm looking at all my clients without exception. And and how long's Airbnb been around? You know, um, almost three, four ten years. years in a, but in a meaningful way, in a, oh, yeah. in a disruptive way, maybe four or five years, right? Right. There's not a single client that I have that doesn't have higher occupancy and, and higher ADR today than did five years ago. So, right, so that, why, is, that why, can't why, be true. Oh, wait, so, it's kind of true for everyone. Yeah, right. so, yeah everybody so why, is because why is the market is whining and high. complaining. Because cause Airbnb and this, this subculture that it's created is, is finite in its, in its reach, right? They didn't right? create it. VRBO existed. All right. right. Like, exactly. all, they okay. did, all they did even, was put better, the right? on it and well, make right. it like so, so wait, 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 wait. Here's what, here's what Airbnb did. Let me do okay, Tim, Ford, Tim Peter, right? Let me then finish. Yeah, okay. Because I, I think the hotel industry is creating a problem that doesn't really exist, which they're all scared that this is going to erode their business. When, when it, There's no evidence that that's actually happening, nor is it likely ever going to happen. So instead of worrying about what they're doing and trying to change what you are, which is successful, to become something you're not and never going to be successful at, right. just be a great hotel and you're going to have business. Stop worrying about Airbnb. It, oh, no, no. I think for pairing. individual hotels, no, worry, you need worry to be about, great that you do. Worry right. about them to the level that when they have an unfair advantage over you. So sure. if they're, if they're not paying... Against. If yeah. they're not paying taxes, if they're yes. not being held to the same safety levels, you know, all right. the things that have a fundamental cost to them, then sure. worry about that. Get them right. on a level playing field with you because if if you're having to follow these laws, it's because someone said this is good for travelers. Well, they're seeing right. travelers. Right. They should have to follow the same laws Absolutely. you do. Agreed. Um, right. So, so, get so worry about it to that. that side for sure. But right. don't try to steal their customers back. Just do great at what you do. Well, You'll be no, no. Fine. It's how do you how do you keep your customers who are now being lured to something? But else? no, they don't. Don't. they're not. They're still oh, coming. No, no, to they, they are. Well, well so no, no. Here's what I would I would argue. No, no. I would argue that with this, a lot of hotels who are not providing the best version of themselves, right, and really answering kind of the market's interests and needs, they are they are losing people. Right. But, so you're saying let me tell you, my, 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 my daughter that are not striving daughter, to provide the best version of what they can do are suffering because another business is doing a better job at that. Of course. But right, that's right. that's that's not Airbnb. But, that's right. but, the hotel across well, the street could do that too I, as well. It it could, except here's a situation. Okay, I'll I'll give you a sample size of two. My daughter oh, and her husband, right? They're 28, good. right? Mm -hmm. They're they're 28 years old, recently married, good job, no everything like that. No kids, right? This is a great client, and they travel a lot. They always stay in Airbnbs. That is now their preferred. They don't. The hotels are a secondary choice for yep. them. Right. The second so, they have a child, I bet you that behavior changes. Um, it'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't because know if it will or won't. The things they don't we'll care about see. as twenty-eight-year-old right. oh, I, I uh, couples, they right. will care greatly about when there's right. a human in tow that they are like uh, strangely but, concerned about. <laughs> But um, let me tell you, my wife and I, when we were in the similar situation when we were 28 and you know recently married and things like that, it was hotels all the way, right? And it was luxury. It was it was great. It was the only choice you had, right? And that's the problem for the hoteliers yeah. is right. now but there are lots people of people are traveling. People more are people are spending money on travel. Like yeah, see, I, 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 I look at, I look at, I look at Airbnb right. as like the the old Doctor Strange love. How I stopped learning to hate and love the bomb is embrace the effect that you have dynamic inventory. You know, one of the classic revenue management strategies is unconstrained yep. demand. 
Okay. Right. You model yourself on the unconstrained demand. Could you build those extra hundred rooms to your market? Right. No, but Airbnb gives them to you. So if you can right. yield against the demand with your product quality that Ed's pointing out to, what the frick do you care that there's another hundred rooms that drop into your market? If you're getting your market share at yieldable rate for your product value. Well, but if you have in high demand periods, when new, when you have dynamic supply added, you can't do that, right? The economics don't work. You cannot force, you don't have scarcity. So right. you can't, you cannot grow your margin. So you are not going to be, and that's what's happening with the hotel industry. You've seen all these, these plateaus of, and again, looking at the macro view of, of the U S it's plateaued fundamentally for a couple of years. 2016 was pretty much kind of the, the peak. And now it's a massive growth. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. and, Right. During a time period that inventory exploded in almost right. every major market, right. mm -hmm. the amount oh, of no, new hotels that have come up. online Absolutely. from 2016 to now, uh, like supply growth hasn't been that supply growth has been kind of muted, which is again versus from 2016 you know, to now. Oh yeah, from historic it, historic there, level, there was, there it's was, like two percent. For a while, yes. Yeah, but there was, there not was, looking at percentage, oh. looking in, in terms of total rooms that are coming in, into oh, sure. market. Yeah, yeah but you've got to look at overall be... growth. Oh no, more people are are traveling, things like that. But then again, you've got to look at these things: China, India, things like that. These guys well, are German. going. Oh no, and when they really do start traveling, they are very, very much oriented toward this. This is a this is something the hoteliers have to have to cope with. Um, but, because but doing it the old way, or understand it and understand yeah. what you can do to benefit. Be aware from it. of it. Yeah, like, be aware of it. The only at time, the, end of the, day. the only times I look at um, being just absolutely frightened by an Airbnb scenario is if you are, for some reason, over your skis, meaning you've allowed your hotel to go way beyond on deferred maintenance and all of that. And you did it because for the longest time you were the only choice in the market. And then all of a sudden an apartment community catches on to that. And instead of long-term leasing all their apartments, they all of a sudden Airbnb them. Um, right. Okay. Yes. So it's, there's a lower threshold to inventory mm -hmm. popping up if you're just not doing your job. Uh, but, but again, even you so, have right? to raise your, you have so to raise your game on doing your job. Right. But even so, the solution isn't worrying about Airbnb. The solution always, always is improving your product, making sure oh, your guest has the best experience. Don't go in and chasing something that someone else has. Right? That, right. That's like the kids in, in the playground trying to get jealous well, of understand what the other kids grabs. Like, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'll say um, Wyndham has done a great job of having a product that answers one of the only reasons I was up for grabs for Airbnb, which was when I was traveling with my kids and I didn't want to be in a lockout. And so what does Wyndham have now? And it's popping up at more and more of their properties. They take these big king suites and they throw bunk beds in them. Right. Mm -hmm. My kids love it. It doesn't even need to be themed. And these are obviously right. not expensive bunk beds they're putting in them. But you right. know what? My kids love them. I now... I've stayed at more Wyndham's in the last two years than I've ever stayed in my traveling career prior to that because I know to look for it and they're great. And they're in effectively the same footprint of what the room was before. They just were really clever of how they worked it in. Um, and now in any of those cities, I'm no longer looking at Airbnb because I got the answer I needed. <laughs> right, right. Oh no, well, and I think that's. I think, I think that is exactly the. You're, yeah, I completely right. agree. That is the point that the hotels have to have to look right. at is go. What are the situations where you can do these things better and and mute the impact of how right. can you be unique and really meet the needs of these travelers instead of saying, well, yeah, I've got two twin beds or a queen and that's it, and I've got yeah, this is the mix. And yeah, right. there's just nothing. But that's nothing just right. understanding your customer and knowing what what their demand Absolutely. is and what their motivators are, right? It's yeah, not right. people write a lot about oh, millenniums like unique experiences and stuff like that. It's well, everybody yeah, but does. At the end of the Everyone day, does. they want <laughs> convenience. You know, they they especially in Ed's scenario, he had two kids. It's about the practicalities of not wanting to have your kid kick you in the face at 2 a.m. in the morning because you're having to share a or bed or right? in a completely it's different room because they're too young. Right. For that to, because to, 
be Ed's, safe. Ed's kids are smart and get out and start yeah, <laughs> out on the town. He's got to go look for them. Yeah. Credit cards it's are missing. Exactly. Going back to the looming that, you know, we self-create our own adversaries and increase our heightened competition as hospitality. Airbnb is selectively competitive. Not they, they compete at different levels for different inventory types and for different traveler types. And your sure. hotel, depending upon your tier of service offerings and so forth, have certain competitive levels, and that's it. And, and with that being said, being very micro about it, there's certain competitive times. The booking cycle of Airbnb, the usability of the inventory that's in comparison to your product is selective. You know, for some regular generic mid-tier hotels, there's a window that's around 45 plus days out that you're competing with the Airbnb inventory option uh, and in the, in the process of, of, yep. a, of a guest deciding on something. Once that window gets passed, you're past that competitive time because Airbnb is not a next day purchase acquisition. There's penalties and costs that go along with it that aren't, don't exist in our, our system and so forth. So the, the, the competitive aspect of Airbnb is time sensitive and product sensitive. And if you identify that within your, your, your competition and you, you pattern that in your market strategy, it isn't just like you're competing with any other hotel at that point. You're competing cyclically with the inventory of the demographics that you have. That's and it. that will never yeah. completely destroy your hotel business. How do I know no. that? Orlando. Mm. Right. Orlando has entire neighborhoods that were built in the late 90s and early 2000s. They are houses, but the entire neighborhood is owned by investors and they're rented as vacation homes. Yeah. There are thousands of them in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And yet Universal's opening another like 12,000 rooms of inventory. Disney's mm -hmm. opening another, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of rooms of inventory over the next 20 years. And hotels are popping up everywhere and they're getting rate and they're getting full. Right. So mm -hmm. yep. Airbnb is not going to put an end to the hotel model. There are markets no. that vacation rental has existed for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah sure. And, and then I, on the I other think, end, the hotel industry has really done a, 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 itself a disservice because all of these articles that hoteliers are writing, you know, fear mongering about Airbnb is probably the best advertising Airbnb could ever get because all yep. we're doing is promoting the fact that it exists yep. and it's an alternative. If the hotel industry focuses on its own product and stops talking about Airbnb, you'll probably see a decrease in demand for Airbnb over time because you never hear Expedia talk about much. Airbnb. And let's face yeah. it, Airbnb is awesome. a much oh. closer competitor to Expedia whoa, than it whoa, is whoa, to a hotel. Whoa, 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 whoa. Expedia owns HomeAway. I can tell you for a fact they are very focused on Airbnb. They, they they're not talking very about Very focused. Yeah. I've not seen oh, an no, they article don't. from oh, no, Expedia they don't. about the threat right. of Airbnb. Right. Oh, no. Why yeah. Why would they? They have They have HomeAway and VRBO, right? right. That's right. what they so, yeah. So they saw the so they're in a they're in a death they're in a death match with them. <laughs> death match, or are they also <laughs> sitting back in the room collecting the bags of money? Like right. I don't. It, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh no, but they are they're out there between booking between booking, Airbnb and Expedia. They're trying to figure out how they can lock this stuff up and and compete most effectively. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean that's and and right now when you start looking at uh, booking. Booking has a big advantage because they have, especially in Europe, a lot of, of inventory, right? You yep. can get apartment, all sorts of stuff, which is Airbnb, right? I mean, even on Booking.com, they now have a button on their homepage, add your, add your place, right, or whatever it's called, add your home, mm -hmm. right? So they are out there completely... Um, doing this, but yeah, for the and for them, it makes all the sense in the world because they don't really care where people stay. They just want to transact the booking and right. and go. So that's that's good. But the hoteliers need to be need to be careful. Is it the hoteliers oh. or the brands? Yeah. The, oh no, but yeah, maybe I should say the brands. The brands. Because yes. I don't think the the physical hotel owner is well, going to okay. be overly disruptive uh, from Airbnb. No, no, it's the, However, it's the brands where which are in are putting in brand standards and saying you can't change this stuff and you have to do it exactly this way. Right. That's, that's a problem. Yep. Yeah. Where they can't. It's also can't an advantage, manage. right? Because that's one of the things hotels are professional people in the hospitality industry. They, when they do have standards and they can offer a consistent product and, and meet mm -hmm. expectations of guests, that's a huge advantage over Airbnb. Because and you, the it's safety a well, of just yeah. being able to say, you know but, what? The bed you put me in is horrible. I want another bed. 
that's not going to happen in right. an apartment. It is well, going to happen in a but hotel. The Air, but the Airbnb guys are smart enough based on the reviews. If people are saying it's a rotten bed, they aren't going to have that. And again, that the guy help that one guest that is the right. first to experience it, right? No, and, no. And that, at no, the end no, of the day, we, we deal in but individuals, and each stay is yeah. But it's the just, it's the same stay. thing. The hostel, the hostel market, and the and the Don't shared, hostile, you know, the, no, the the <laughs> hostel market, the shared home environment is it's like eBay. It's all driven by by guest reviews, right? It's kind of the TripAdvisor type thing. If you see something with three reviews, and it's you know. You, you go to the one where there are, where there are a lot you know a lot more yeah, sure. and and with their focus again the Airbnb guys are not stupid they are focusing on their Airbnb for business so they can get all this duty of care stuff those things are sprinklered and have smoke detectors and have high speed they're trying you know, but they're not making stuff. a lot of having a lot of success on the business side yeah no. you know maybe oh, they will oh they're, they're They've, They've not really had an impact in a meaningful way. Are they eroding a little bit? Maybe they are eroding. They are certainly. But they are certainly. It, it goes back to what I started out as: is if you focus on your product and delivering great experience to your guests, take the it's the Amazon approach. Don't worry so much about the competition. Just worry about mm. the customer in front of you, because that really is the most important part of your business. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So. I don't want to blow past any of the other topics. Of course, we'll post all of them onto the show notes and so forth, but we're at a point where we actually can talk about the rot row even. <laughs> well, I <laughs> noticed did we, the week that the Trump thing was the rut row, did it not end up being the rut row that week? Because now it's a just normal news item under brands and product. Oh, which one? The, the Trump the, Organization Scrap Scion. American oh, Idea yeah. Hotel. I love their no, new release. I love their news release. It was like, even though we suck, we are the greatest company in the world. <laughs> it was a very Trump-esque response. Right? Yeah. yeah, it was a very Trump response. It's like, even though yeah. we're going down in flames, we're doing this because of the better good of the country, because we're the greatest hotel company in the world. Yeah. But our, our leader has greater aspirations, so we have to suck and die. <laughs> I, I, was, I was going to have that as a rut row, but in deference to Tim, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, if you remember, I responded that we used it as a rut row when they announced they were going to do this. Because <laughs> if you remember, we pointed out how awesome. ironic it was that they took a failed car brand and thought that it would be yeah, for exactly. the same reasons that that car company thought it was a great brand. Yeah. Uh, this, they thought it would be a great brand for that same reason. And we spoke about it for, I think, an hour. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about how it was inevitably going to fail. Let me yeah. ask you a question. Now that the new Bomb Boy release is out um, and the ad the ad went out, what do you guys think about their ad and what do you think about Marriott trying to – I mean, do you think it's actually going to catch? Because right now the only people that are saying, this is amazing, this is great, are Marriott people. Everybody else is laughing at it. and I haven't seen a good comment from a non-Marriott person yet. It'll be fine. I mean, it's not a great name. It, it's a it's compromise. Not gonna it, it's, people are going to the people are not going to burn their burn their Marriott right. Visa card and then go get a Hilton Mastercard, yeah, right. sort of I, thing yeah. and switch. Yeah. yeah, they'll they'll get used to it. And, okay. and Mar long term, yeah. it might work out for them. I, the name is terrible, but I think long term, combining mm -hmm. all these different rewards programs into yeah, something yeah. single singular makes sense long term. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. That, that and and th there's no right way of doing that. You're not going to make. You can't. You can't satisfy everybody unless you gave away the farm. Yeah. I, I just. Mean, I yeah. wish I was in that pitch meeting when the the agency, the overpaid agency, was trying to convince them that this was a good name and and trying right. to. You have to well, explain they, every yeah. aspect of it and the nuances yeah. to it. It's not. I'm a good sure. Name. And they like just and they went through all the alternatives. Yeah. Slide deck. <laughs> talking yeah. about all the very complex ways they came to this word. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. what this word will stand for across right. all this huge swarm. It, it goes back to if you have to explain the punchline, it's not a good joke. Right. Well, I, I, and hate I'm sure and I hate marketers, and I work for a marketing agency. So, and, so you just and, hate yourself. So, yeah, <laughs> the bottom so line, Sorensen, I'm sure, at the very end of the meeting just went, we don't have anything better, do we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anybody, yeah. anything <laughs> anybody have anything else? No. Can we, can we stick with Marriott? Okay. Rewards? Would that work? How much was yeah. the bill? Okay, stop. We're yeah. good. Yeah. That's yeah. a sunk cost at that point. Yeah, yeah right. Like, yeah, that was the the, yeah. yeah if said, we're doing go, this go, further, go we're spending more. 
Yeah. Come back with Enough something else. Money Ten million dollars. All right, we're good. Yeah, yeah. we'll take Bomb yeah. Boy for two hundred, Bob. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. So, I mean, yeah, it's not a great. Yeah, and Twitter has been merc- unmerciless. To, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> to me, Bomb Boy sounds like the opposite of a dating app. It's like a breakup app or something like that. Yeah. Like Bomb Boy. Kiss <laughs> off. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. Speaking of which, so let's go the opposite side of that. Um, have you guys heard Motel 6's uh, radio spot that's targeted at millennials? No. Uh, is it is it Tom Bodet still? It Where is Tom Bodet oh, speaking Tom in millennial so speak. So oh, at the really? end, be great. The, the, the part that got me, so I'm listening to it, and I'm like, oh, this is clever. This is clever. And then he said, and as always, our our rates are low AF. Oh, <laughs> and I great. died because he's saying it's so like straight. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it, it's. I liked it. I'm not a millennial. The millennials, yeah. of course, don't like it. They think it's uh, condescending. Oh, yeah. But maybe right. that was the point of the ad. Maybe exactly. they were just actually yeah. going after Gen Xers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love um, mock millennials. I do highly recommend just Google Motel Six Millennial Radio and listen to it because it's almost like a it's almost like a Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. I I really like it. Um, I think it's great. Kudos to Motel Six and and the Tom and the Tom Bodette, that whole campaign with him is now going on. Buzz God, buzzing, I don't know yeah. how many. Yeah, three decades, and yep. it's always been good. And as always, their rates are low AF. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they are no I think longer he said something he said something like their flat screen TVs are always on fleek. I mean it's it's but he's saying it in his Tombow that we'll leave oh, yeah. the light on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll it's fantastic. So so I highly yeah. recommend Googling uh Motel Six's uh oh, latest marketing out. strategy. And and when you Google it, you'll see there's a ton. Reddit has a Reddit thread on it and it's actually not overly negative it's like funny um yeah. it's uh there's been a lot of articles written by like uh safe place millennials that have been very offended by it uh and then articles are by millennials saying hey it was tongue-in-cheek i i appreciated it yeah sense um, of humor guys <laughs> yeah um uh, i allowed a sense of humor and here's the thing i i when's the last time i talked about a motel six ad so oh, regardless yeah. of what it's it done right yeah, yeah, job done. Um, yeah. And it actually made me, I laughed. Like, and, and I was just in my car driving and I was listening to it going, oh, this is clever. This is clever. But when he said our rates are low AF, yeah. uh, it actually caused me to laugh. And I can't think of the last time I had <laughs> well, it. Well, I was like, daddy, what does AF mean? Yeah. I've, well, I've got, a, I've got a hope. And I would think Motel 6 would have realized that this is going for more, you know, boomer type. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gen X than than millennials because they need the frame of reference to understand this is Tom Bodet and Motel Six, and this is what's making it so out of character. If these millennials, you know, didn't really hear, they don't know who the guy is or any of the backstory. Then they he even explains go, I don't it. Get it. He explains yeah. it in the radio ad that you oh, don't okay. know me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, oh, see, that makes it even better. It's really funny. That's good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so on the uh, on what I think the opposite end of Bonvoy is, I'm going to say kudos to Motel 6 uh, for just really standing out in something that is really tough to stand out in, uh, which yeah. is radio advertising. Ex- exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, very true. Yeah. Um, so very cool. um, what is the rut road for today, Mr. Robert? I decided the rut row because there were actually a, a variety of these things. Is a uh, the poor guys at Caesars? Um, well, I shouldn't say poor because they do have hundreds of millions of dollars coming in. <laughs> but uh, I re- I remember their uh, their former CEO talking about they they ran into a little bit of trouble after the uh, global financial crisis, and he commented that uh, being the CEO of that company is kind of like waking up in the morning with because they had twenty three billion in debt with a refrigerator on your chest. <laughs> It's, uh, but, uh, you know, they've kind of cleared up some of that stuff. But Carl Icahn, who's um, a very, let's call him an activist invent- investor. Right. You take Carl Icahn's in. money, you know eventually Carl Icahn is going to force you to sell. Like, right. Exactly. This is what he does with every company. So when you right. take his money, you know you're taking his money. And at some point, he's going to turn on you. 
and become yeah. very painful to deal with. Right. And does. make a fortune in the process. And make a ton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so he, he worked up a 9.8% stake in, in Caesars. And uh, yeah, and now he's saying, hey, you guys can do better. So Whoa. sell. Right, which uh, throws a lot of uh, yeah, because that's when you should sell more. is when you're underperforming and doing poorly. It's it's part of his shtick. It's right. how he manipulates exactly. the market. Yep. yep. Yeah. So what exactly. he just did is he just did the hey, you know what? You guys need to do better, but you're doing way better than you were when I invested. So yeah. I'm going to do this exactly. to see if anyone shows up with a really good offer that I can yeah. force you into. Yeah, that I can take yeah. money off of. Yeah, right. Well, and and he realizes that um, just Fertitta, now realizes. Well, no, but Fertitta, who has Golden Nugget, right, and they own Landry's restaurants, right. So it's a pretty big group in a, out of Houston. They own the Houston Rockets, or well, I don't know if they do, or it's kind of a family. It's one of these things where is it the brothers or who owns what? But it's it's a pretty sizable group that they had you know wanted to do something with a with an acquisition and, a lot of and that didn't go through. A lot of Galveston. Oh yeah, yeah. They own a ton, a ton of stuff. Uh, they did a great job with the Golden Nugget too. I mean, since they picked oh, yeah. it up, what they've done to that property—that property is great. Oh yeah, yep. And those were the two guys who originally started Travelscape, who, who originally bought that and did it. And then, then, um, yeah, the the Fertitas came in and and really have done a great a great job with that uh, that property. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so anyway, they have about 4 million shares. I don't know how many shares Icon has, but he knows there's an interested buyer. Oh, oh no, their 4 million shares are less than 1%, right? Yeah, it's so, nothing. Yeah. So, um, but they thought the company was undervalued, you know, then. So here's, you know, Icon. So anyway, yeah, it's a, yeah. it'll be interesting, but this, this kind of stuff just throws. Just throws Google Bo Carl Icon wants to sell. Yeah. And you'll find a laundry list of companies oh, yeah. that he's done this to. Oh, yeah. So again, when Carl oh, Icahn starts buying up chunks of your company, guess what's coming? He's and he, watch he did it. He did it with Tropicana, and yeah, I mean, he's yeah, you know, and he always. I don't know how many times he loses on these deals. I don't think he's been at it a long time. I don't think it's very often. <laughs> So where it's like, oh damn, yeah, we blew it on that one. It's that's not it. He's he's holding the cards and playing the game, and and I'm sure they have a little you know decision hierarchy going. Oh, the group reacted this way. We're going to do. I mean, it's a matter of time. Options. Let's do it's this. It's a matter of time options. until hospitality digital marketing gets forced to sell because Carl Icahn bought. Like ninety percent of it. You you, you you made me nervous because I was like, man, I just sold a whole chunk to him. What's yep. going on next? It's a matter you know? of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't have taken the cash. It seemed too nice. It was a poison apple, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. And he's saying, for some reason, he's saying we should have an editorial calendar or some sort of structure to these things. I don't know. That's he's talking crazy. crazy. Just an we activist. don't listen to no thinking editorial calendars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lists. We don't need no lists. Yeah. Um, hey, speaking of I'm going to Vegas next week. And I'm speaking at uh, their breakfast series for Los And I'm really pretty stoked because we're over 60 people signed up. And I'm the only name on the docket. I'm like, do they know who's wow. talking? Did they, did maybe they and where is it? Program. Where is it being held? At what it's property? at the MGM conference. It's uh, at oh, the MGM. Okay. Um, right. who, who, who did they try to get before you? Yeah, uh, somebody would want to charge a hell of a lot of money. I think I think they thought that they were still showing up or something. I don't know. I think it's going to be yeah, a lot. That's what it is. Deal. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, but I got two and a half hours of happiness with these people. Wow, <laughs> just that's long AF, Lauren. That's long <laughs> AF. <laughs> just imagine <laughs> the stuff I'm going to stuff in their heads. I mean, wow. Lauren, Lauren is going to be flying his drone, just droning and droning for two Same. and a half hours. I'm telling you guys, this is the wave of the future. These need to be over your casino tables, and like people yeah. should be able to drive them and drop oh, yeah. chips to oh, bet. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be flying the drone in the room, going. You too could have this. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going all drone. <laughs> so what what is the topic you're talking about, Lauren? Actually, it's conversions. It's it's blending all of marketing, revenue management, and sales together. But methodology, step by step, data stage. So it's, it's, it's going to look a lot like this. It's gonna be. Yeah. A <laughs> so, hey, everyone's gonna walk out like this. Did you take my <laughs> Lauren? Did you take my advice? You have under 500 slides, right? Is oh, I, it's not a slide count. 
It's not a slide count. No, well, two and a half hours. That's only slide, two yeah. slides for you, Robert, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's I'm the guy who does 500 count. slides. That's right. Count. That's fair. Actually, I'm, I am I am mindful of the fact that I am a bit of a fire hose and a talkative person. I have it broken up. I have a I have a pre I have a pre book, uh, workbook that they that they have to go through questionnaires to get their mind in the in the right space. Then I have a workbook that they that has all the key features of what I'm eating because I'm actually feeding them. Is there a certification at the back end of this thing? Yeah, and I'm recording the presentations. So they can go back to it. Uh, but the, the cool part is, is like this is actually functional shit. Like you know, they can go and do step by step stuff on how to blend their process, where to pull the data, how to use it in revenue, how sales can translate it, all that stuff. I'm actually, it's like spill the beans for two hours. Like this is how wow. you're supposed to do this stuff. You oh, know, now hire me. Office. Yeah. Now well, I, actually, at the end of the two hours, me. what do you mean? You just gave us all the stuff. All right. They don't need to hire me. They're like, I got it now. We're good. No, they're going to be so confused and say, there's no way I can do all this, these crazy <laughs> yeah. ass things. Right. I mean, I'm, actually, I'm actually trying to keep it practical. No, there's no pie in the eyes. It's it's, it's all pie in the eyes. Wait, wait. <laughs> pie in the sky. I've sky. Not heard that one in the sky and there's pie in the uh, sky. I can't see. I got pie in my eye. It's, it's it's literally, the drone was dishing out the pie. Was, it? Yeah, the drone. Yeah. The, the drone pie. crashed into a pie and yeah. it just flung it all into the eye. Spray got you in the eye. It should be fun. I'm trying to break the record. They've never had this many people except for once. They had 71 people. I'm trying to now, push it. Here's the thing I'm going to ask. I would like a picture of the room at the beginning and a picture <laughs> of the room at the end. Because while I'm impressed that you've gotten so many pre-registrations, my question is, is how many make it all the way? Oh, they'll make it all the way. You forget, but I'll be putting chains on the doors. Yeah, he locks them in, man. <laughs> Takes all yeah. his cell phones. As everyone oh, yeah. stands up to leave, he'll be like, oh, you have a question. Great. Yeah. 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 So no, actually they, they don't. That's the two things they're notorious for, which is why I'm so stoked about this. One is that they, they very rarely do early registration. They say normally these people, you know, they're worried about it, whatever that the two days before is when they get most of the registrations. And the second is, is that, um, when it comes to, to, uh, engagement, they don't engage because well, there's like the room with what, last week you already had 60 people registered, right? Yeah. 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 Well, so you, you could go, how big's the room? Go over hundred. Yeah. As wow. big as they want it to be, but they've, they've, they've never gone over 70. So we'll see. Oh, you'll beat that. You should. Yeah. Oh, so oh. again, I would like a pre and post photo, please. All right. Yeah, I'll exactly. do a selfie. I want the video. I want the entire I want a, video. I want a live Go ahead drone and explain video to the audience from the audience. As you were speaking to your uh, fellow panelists who tend to speak at things a lot too, that they strongly questioned your ability to keep the audience through two and a half hours. <laughs> hey, you can ask Holly, and I think that'll at least fill. I had minutes. a whole day of people. Now, granted, it was Holly's content, so you know. Yeah, you were you were Vanna in that. You weren't. <laughs> I was leading by myself. I had I had the whole room to myself. Now, again, it was Holly's content, so different story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's, that's because oh, Holly, hey, Lauren, hey, Lauren. Hey, if, hopefully, you took a tip from Holly and actually developed an outline before this, and then you'll be yeah. That that will help. It's just oh, it's going to be a verbal <laughs> onslaught of uh, dude. Honestly, when when Lauren gets excited about something, I I understand like maybe forty percent of what he says because he just goes. He's going to have forty five minutes episodes. dedicated to That's having so, yeah. drones. I'm trying to break it up. Literally, I'm, I'm being mindful of the fact I have I do I'm doing. Two sections and two segments each. So half hour, five minute break, half hour, five minute break, 10 minute break, half hour, five minute, half hour, five minute, 15 Q and A afterwards. I'm really literally trying to be mindful of the fact that I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to dull the blade with them. I don't want to just beat them down to a pulp or like, yeah, please just shut up and leave. Let's go. We need to, oh, we need to find someone that's attending and give them questions that are going to set Lauren off. Exactly. Yeah. yeah right. I'm yeah. Mind drones. Drones. Thank you so much. Thank you. Could you I'm tell us about people. drones? What, what's the answer? Yeah, it's real, How do you uh, feel about drones, Lauren? <laughs> yeah, or, oh, no, no. All they have to do is say app sumo in minute five. <laughs> oh, exactly. Two and a half hours later, oh, my God, we haven't covered anything. But Lauren it's has an entire section on how to create a MySpace page. That's right. <laughs> That's a great section. Oh, there, there was another. There was another potential rut row that I didn't do, which is Google Plus is shutting down. Yeah, I hope you have a section on how they can again. Pivot all of those their things, social. One yeah. of those things you knew would happen the day yeah. they announced they were doing yeah. it. The what only thing that, that has is 
Everyone's got to go and oh, take I love the Google Plus icon off of their website now. That's the only negative. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I think we should start a Reddit feed on finding those. Oh, that's a good point. I think that a lot of people say them. No, I know, but I'm talking be... about like that it'll get funnier is... as the years go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Who's the will. last person? That's to take an it excellent idea. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Who's the last that, that, that drops G Plus off there? Remember Google Wave? Yeah, I love Wave. Oh, I it do. Was awesome. I love Wave. I love Wave, Wave it was... too, but then it just yeah. never even heard of it. Oh. Oh Dude, my it was supposed to be oh, the email okay. killer, but the problem is it wasn't really cross compatible, so that you would need everyone to stop using email and start using Wave as the oh. communication method. Yeah. So yeah. And it was it was cross it. cross platform communication, um, right? They, they programmable Google Docs collaboration in real time with email, so it's kind of like instant messenger slash email where you could collaborate together, so you oh, could do okay. things like polls and and stuff. So it was a lot more oh, functional yeah. than email. I thought any sort of collaborative collab for yeah. hotels, any collaborative selling thing from groups to travel yeah. agency things for leisure, all that stuff could have been just amazing. And yeah. and they have the, the guys UI who um, who developed. Oh no no, the and the and the, the they great. didn't. They presented the technology and they didn't really have use cases, right? It was just like, right. look at this new Swiss Army knife. And it was like, wow. I, I know, dude. They had the killer That's app so cool. right there, where to yeah. go to lunch in the office. Because that is yeah. an ordeal right now. And they had exactly. where you could say which one of these you places. Could. And in real time, you could all vote on which one you wanted and it would tabulate it. So yeah, that that right there has had me That's sold. amazing. That would, that would have oh, saved yeah. my Or, my you know, when you're trying to. That man hours a day. When you're trying to organize like 15 different people onto when we can get yeah. on a conference call, you right? Know. That's the kind oh, no. of stuff. It, so. That was the kind of stuff it was really good at, and it was developed by the guys who developed um, maps, right? So they had some right. of their a, they had their A tier guys really, yeah. you know, doing this, and then it just they lost yeah. interest and went somewhere and just like ah, uh, forget it. It was a, yeah. well, well, they realized they realized, they realized yeah. Gmail was right. being used so heavily and people were spending so much time in it that the idea of creating something that causes people to spend less time in your right. you know money making app was a bad idea yeah exactly but it, it is weird no one's tried to tackle it again because you think about how email is um, it has a lot of challenges right in terms yeah. of conversation and how time between slack, yeah slack, slack, right? slack is yeah. the strong one yeah slack right, is strong. But it, but and yet people still use both, right? So why? Right. Well, why because has nothing replaced email? I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because like all forms of communication, there is a hierarchy. Like I don't want to receive an email from you that's you know sixty paragraphs long. That should be a conversation. That's my emails. What you don't like my emails? Just like <laughs> exactly. you know, I I don't want you to uh, give me bad news over text message. Like there's times when talking should be there. You know there was something personal there, Ed. We're sorry that he <laughs> that was still for you, has it. There's Stuart. a scar. There's a scar. My bad. There. Sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's different levels of communication um, and, and chat. Like I, I have a rule, like if, if you're going to text message me something and it's going to require like more than eight or nine volleys to get to where we need to get to, I'm just going to call you because it's yeah. faster. Right. Yeah. But no, the problem is challenge is not everyone's hierarchy is the same, right? No, right. no yeah. one knows how to communicate. That's kind of the, the rule of the human condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's really the, that's the weekly rut row really is the name yeah, exactly. Hey, it's, why voice, it's why voice is flawed, because it mm -hmm. requires people to know how to communicate what they want. <laughs> uh, anyways, gentlemen, we are well past our normal time of two hours. Yes. That's because we had a four-hour fight on whether or not drones in the hotel are a good idea. And, and I, you know, and I feel like I've won that to some degree. I, I'm this <laughs> Of course you did. Yeah. Lauren has learned a lot from the political landscape. You just declare victory regardless right. of any. Regardless of the actual yeah. outcome, just yeah, walk right. away with pride. You know, like, hey, yeah. that was my win. <laughs> congrats, Lauren. Congrats. Yep, congratulations. It was, good, it was a good win, Lauren. Thank you so much. Ed. All right. With that, gentlemen, Mr. Robert Cole, if you want to know about you and Rock Cheetah, where is it they can find you, sir? Rock Cheetah or at Robert K. Cole on social media. And Mr. Ed, for those for those for Flip 2 that are soon to be running drone video footage. <laughs> right that you can drive um through hallways 
Uh, mm-hmm. Go to uh, flip.co uh, or you can find me on social media, Edward St. Ange. And uh, by the way, I want to thank you, Mr. Stewart, for the fact that now that I've tried to be physical and work out regularly, uh, your podcast is my uh, my accompaniment while I go over and make it painfully painful. <laughs> Laura's love listening to you. Keeps them motivated. That's uh, yeah, the we out. have it in the beginning yeah. of the show. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do, do, do. But if they want to know about Fuel Travel and your wonderful podcast, where is it they can find you, sir? Yeah, if anywhere. It, the mothership is fueltravel.com, but any – Look anywhere for Fuel Travel, you'll find us. The, the podcast is fueltravel.com slash podcast. And uh, we're doing an episode we're going to record today on the top 10 list of lists for 2019. So we've gone oh, and found, oh. you know, because everyone at this time of year is the top 10 clickbait. whatever, right? That is such so a gonna, meta clickbait. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. We're doing, yeah, yeah we're getting the super meta in this one. So and number top. four will blow your mind. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you will never believe. You should blow your mind in the top ten list. No, no, top number 10. seven. You want to get to number seven so you have better engagement. And you get them down uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing Man. the top ten lists of lists. I think it's ten. It might not be, but it's a top X list of lists. So wow, wow. X yeah. ten. We do, we do want to also thank Tal for showing up uh, earlier on the show for uh, fly there. For uh, being our special guest co-host uh, for a replay of this show and all previous episodes, you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live. You'll find the links to all uh, 185 shows there. And uh, the well curated list of, from Mr. Robert that we did not get to in its entirety in any aspect, except for top uh, yeah, top yeah. headline and rot row. But there is well, a we lot of like four of his stories. Well, that's yeah. And Stewart said he read one. Which was even more amazing. <laughs> as, as with Lauren, I I can cons- I got a big win. That's a, a big, big win. win. That's a yeah. big win. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Until next week, uh, eleven thirty Eastern, ten thirty Central. Thank you everyone for having listened to live and been past. So we'll see you next week. All right. <laughs>